big companies that thrive and know how to market and how to sell, it doesn't matter what your name, I mean, look, it's the company called Dicks. Nobody said, I don't know, man, that's a, I don't know if that's a good name. That's, yeah. no, they didn't care. They open up everywhere and they're yeah, blowing up. They got a good product. Would you be happy if you pick up your brand new car and all of a sudden I'm like, yeah, they, they didn't pay for the stuff to get repaired, so we just left it. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, my truck looks two different colors. I'm like, I know. I just don't think that's fair. And us as consumers, what are we allowing the insurance company to do? So what's going on, everybody? So on today's show, we have none other than Oscar from Scottsdale Collision, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Owner, operator. Mm -hmm. You're killing it, dude. You, Thanks, man. I appreciate I, it. I feel like I've seen two or three buildings. We have three buildings. We have two actual shops, one in Tempe, one in Phoenix. And then we have a um, what I call a remote location in Scottsdale. Nice. Um, it's it, it can be very expensive to open up a new collision center. There's a lot of equipment. There's a lot of tooling. There's a lot of stuff that you got to fill that shop with. And um, it doesn't make sense to open that many collision centers. So my initial goal was to open up five in the Valley. My initial was like, hey, open out one at East, one Tempe, one Central, one out West, and mm. then try to figure out where we can place the last one. And once we started doing business, I realized that that's very expensive to do. Yeah. And it would take forever to get an ROI on, on, on your investment from a body shop. So I said, why don't we build some decent sized body shops? And then we open up these remote locations throughout the Valley that can feed us business. So I no longer have to compete with everybody in the area, right? So normally where I'm allowed to be, there's gonna be more body shops there because it's, it's, it's gotta be zoned for a body shop. It's yeah, gotta yeah, have yeah. a permit for A1 the zoning, A2, yeah, yeah. whatever, yeah. So we need to all that. So all the body shops gravitate <clears> to that <throat> same area. So I said, well, you know, when we were in Tempe, that was my first location, that was my flagship. And I said, how come we're not getting any business from Scottsdale? And I'm on Weber and Miller, so Scott hey, Sorotti. He's down. saying this as his name is Scott Still Collision. Right. <laughs> and you know what's I'm crazy? I'm just messing with you, though. No, no, no. So when we looked at the shop, we 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 go, well, we bought the shop, and we're like, do we want to keep the name? I think the name is very powerful. Oh, so you bought it from someone with that same name? I bought it with the same name. The, so I love the name. I, well, that's the thing, right? I, yeah. I, we, we just bought the name, not the liability. So we're like, okay, we'll keep the name because I think the name's very strong. You come to Arizona and most Scottsdale, people- Scottsdale, bro, you know Scottsdale. Scottsdale. So I go, okay, that's a good name. And you know, ultimately it doesn't matter what your last name is or where you're at. Like big companies that thrive and know how to market and how to sell, it doesn't matter what your name, I mean, look, it's the company called Dick's, you know, and they've opened up, nobody said, I don't know, man, that's a, I don't know if that's a good name. That's, yeah. no, they didn't care. They open up everywhere and they're yeah, blowing up. They got a good product. Yeah. So. Our goal is to do the same thing where the name is just a catchy name, right? But mm -hmm. we'll try to make sure that we create brand awareness everywhere. Mm. What's the point of changing the name? What if I change it to Oscars Collision and then it doesn't, I don't, to Bro, my I wouldn't thing, even do nothing. I don't think it matters. I, I think, think there's three of those like right on the next block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like junky. So I, it, you know, I, I looked at it and I go, okay, the name's great. Let's just run it everywhere. It's got the Collision Center. Chick-fil-A doesn't change his name because they change cities, mm -hmm. right? They, they just Chick-fil-A, they do really good at branding it. So that was my goal. And then the next thing I saw, um, anyways, going back to the, the, the remote location, we weren't getting any business from Scottsdale, anything past Chaparral North, we weren't necessarily getting a ton of business. Like they would call, ask for the address, would tell them where we're at, and then they would go, oh, okay, we'll call you back. So then I'm like, I'm getting a lot of these, I'll call you back. So then I'm like, I gotta be proactive. So I started calling customers and I'm like, hey, I just wanted to follow back up with you. I noticed that you got an estimate from us and, and nothing happened. Is there anything we could have done better? And they're like, you're really too far. Mm. And I'm like, well, if you don't mind me asking, where did you end up going? And they're like, oh, Penske and North Scott. So I'm like, that's five miles further than I am. Yeah, but you're in Tempe and we don't really commute to Tempe. And after like a handful of those, I was like, okay, light bulb goes off. And I'm like, we got to open up in North Scottsdale if we're going to get, you know, that demographic. Yeah. So what we did, a buddy of mine has a, um, a buddy of mine has a, um, a, st a car storage place in North Scottsdale. that stores high end cars. And I said, Hey, let me run like an a toy, toy barn type thing. Similar to that. Yeah. Right. So I was like, let me run an office out of your spot. Not only do you have a beautiful image, but now I can make this office look like I'm a collision center here. And what I'll do is it's like the dry cleaning model, right? So most people think that wherever you drop off your shirts is where they're going to get dry. No, cleaned. they take them to the, yeah. They take them where it's cheaper rent. It's a bigger facility. They can mm -hmm. put the machine and they only have one machine, but they have somehow they have 10 shops throughout 
the the valley that you go drop off your dry cleaning yeah yeah and all the customer cares about is I that, love that. It, it get dro- it gets dropped off and it gets picked up at a yeah, convenient they know location. they dropped it off in scottsdale and they're picking it right back up in That's you know, 20 days or whatever so you drop it off in scottsdale now i get now i get you know five jobs a week out of my scottsdale location and my expenses out of there are this big dude i love that because it's like that whole remote concept a lot of people don't think of it that way you know like you're literally creating this this um, remote office, almost like a facade. I don't want to call it a facade because facade gives a fake name to right. it. But but you got but this. That's that's, you, that's, that's what, what it is. It is. It's, and it, and you're like taking customers, and then you're gonna you're driving the cars back to your collision center, in Tempe or wherever, or you know, and then you're taking it back, and the customer they don't even care at that point. They're not asking where it's getting done. Some people may say, let me if see your shop. We'll tell them, no, no yeah. pro- that's no problem. Yeah, I'm we, very we, transparent we're, we're, with the yeah. people. We're going to transport it to our shop in Tempe. That's yeah. where we have the tooling, yeah. the guys, the experience, yeah. and we keep them all in-house. Dude, I love that. What happens is this, right? So when, when the business goes crazy, we have plenty of room. When a business, when a business slows down, I just got to make sure that each one of these little shops brings me enough business to feed my main shop. Mm. And then I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about, you know, competing with the 20 shops that are within a two mile radius of my shop. Right. There's literally 20 shops, 20 yeah. body shops. Yeah, I believe that. Within a five mile radius of where my Tempe shop is. So I'm like, how do I draw a business without oh, then competing you gotta go with to, these you guys? You got to go to like Chandler. That's the next step. The next goal is to go. Gilbert Chandler or? Gilbert Queen Creek, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Santan, further east. Off the yeah, Santan further there. east, because that's all new territory. Yeah, um, yeah. The, we love the demographic out there. I used to live in Queen Creek. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm very big on family. So I was, when I first opened the shop, it was taking me an hour and a half commute yeah. to and from, um, and I just couldn't stay away from my kids to kind of defeat the purpose of why I owned a business, right? You own a business to buy yourself some freedom and some time so you can spend time with your family. Totally. And I was doing the complete opposite. Yeah. I was spending way too much time commuting and working and then not seeing my family. I'm like, this is not going to work. So I ended up moving closer to the shop. I moved to South Phoenix. We've been there for six years. And I'm home in five minutes. Are you like Levine area or something? No, I'm on 32nd Street in Southern. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like by the point over there kind of. Yeah, so have you heard of um, the farm, the restaurant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Right next to it. We okay. walked there on Saturdays to grab, uh, That's pretty to grab breakfast. Yeah. Beautiful place. Uh, and, and our goal is to move actually right next to the farm. They have this horse property. I'm really big on plants and agriculture and all that. I like grow my own food. So we've been doing that at our house for the last four years. And my goal is eventually to get a house with two acres and kind of build my own greenhouse and kind of grow my own stuff. Yeah, I know where you're at. You're, so you're, uh, you, the road curves, right? Southern yeah, curves. Yeah. I, right and there. It, there's like some tree farms right there. Yep. My grandma, well, she was like a step grandma, but she lived in a trailer park right there, uh, kind of in that area. But I know exactly where you're at. That's exactly it. It's, it's, yeah. they, it's a brand new community, really small. We really like it. There's only 140 houses in the community. It's gated. It's, and it's close to everything. So, that's where we're at now. Um, well, no plans on moving anytime soon. Not yeah. yet. The goal is to keep building the business, keep you know thriving in the business, and then and then we'll figure that out later. I, I still going back to that re- the remote location is like everyone thinks so much that we got to spend all this money to open up this location, and 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 it would cost a lot of money, you know. But like when I when I'm thinking more and more, I'm like, well, what industries can you do like this? It's almost any industry you if you're taking in about anything, yeah. Yeah, if you're taking in a product or or, or it's kind, it reminds me of like um, you know, like the uh, uh, traveling centers. They're mm-hmm. everywhere. They're just like one person. They're doing nothing, That's but it. they're just talking to people and yep. writing it all up, and boom. That's it. Yeah. You know? So look, I, I my new facility that I open kind of looks like yours, right? It's, it's sleek. This it doesn't look like a collision center. Like you walk in and you're like, damn, this place looks really nice. And that's what I'm going for down the road, right? That was the, 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 my Phoenix location is my nicest location. They got remodeled. They got done the way I wanted to do. Because my ultimate goal is to turn the collision center and, and take the stigma away from, you know, the automotive field of yeah. like, they're not transparent, none of this. And, and, and become very similar to, I got three concepts of mine, right? So discount tire because they're in the automotive, Chick-fil-A and in and out right? So discount tire took a dirty, tire model right yeah and they made it a household name and they made it very efficient and transparent for anybody to go there so your grandma can go there and they'll tell her hey these are your options for tires yeah and it's a clean environment it's a clean environment yeah, super clean, good the guy's it. professional yeah. you can see the guys in the back working safety blah 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 blah, blah. It, and it works great right and they grow strategically they're not just opening up 
discount tires everywhere. It's mm -hmm. very strategic the way they open. But most important of all, it's a household name. Your grandma, your daughter, pretty much anybody that you have either at your home or your business can go there, get their tires checked, get informed, educated on what tires you need and why, and then make a transaction without any difficulty. Well, the collision industry is all sorts of screwed up. Why? Because how, when was the last time you educated your kids on what happens when you get in a collision? Never, bro. We never do, right? Yeah. And it's such a traumatic event and things happen so fast. What do you do? What do you do if your daughter gets in a collision? Knock on wood, hopefully that never happens. Wh what is she to do? Who is she calling? What is she saying? Where is she taking the car? The car's got to get picked up. Where is it going to go? Yeah, and, and a lot of times it's like, oh, they're down the street, even though they suck. Mm -hmm. It's not like you said, because there's no rule. There's a couple that are big names. But I think those guys are shutting down too. The one that was open up everywhere across the country. Well, there, there's what's happening right now is you have these capital groups coming in and they're understanding the value in the collision industry. Yeah. And they're just swallowing up well, yeah, body shops left and right. Uh, you, 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 that's all insurance claims. Yeah. Not all of it. It's but. what is it? A thirty-four billion dollar industry, the collision yeah, industry. Yeah. That's a huge industry. Yeah. Right. I don't know how many cars you have, but I'm assuming with your fleet and yeah. your cars. We have a few. Yeah, you have a lot of cars, right? Yeah. So, and those cars are on the road all the time. And it doesn't matter how we make, how much technology we put on these cars, they're still, they still get damaged because you got to remember that we still have technology in our hands and we're very <laughs> distracted people. And, and that creates destruction, destruction creates accidents. You, you can't be distracted when you're going 80 miles an hour. Like you're not going to react on time to, to protect yourself. But it's a huge industry. So you're having all these capital groups come in and they're saying, hey, We'll buy your shop, we'll buy your shop, we'll buy your shop, and then put them all together. And then they'll call the insurance company and go, okay, Progressive, I have four shops open up. I'm ready to partner up with you. Mm -hmm. Progressive will love that because then they'll put you on a, or whatever insurance company, they'll put you on a contract with them saying, okay, we're going to send you all the business, but you got to you gotta sign this agreement that you can't charge for this, this, yeah, this, and that. Yeah, certain pricing tiers and stuff like that. It's yeah. not even pricing tiers. It's just you can't charge for this, you can't charge for this. If this happens, you can't charge for it. We're not paying for this. And then pretty much whatever we approved, you have to be okay with. That's a tough one. Well, then your integrity goes to shit, right? So if, if, if you're, which it's, and it's, don't get me wrong. It's very tempting, right? You go, you go. Well, yeah, it's a big customer. You, you go start this, dating yeah. flow and then, you know, the flow of business starts going through the door and then your books start getting bigger. And at that point you're like, well. I don't really care. I'm making more money than I've ever made. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like you're becoming a problem to the industry because you're allowing those things to happen to consumers. And I don't think that's okay, right? Because ultimately you and I are consumers. So the the crappy over job I do for my consumers, then then that's gonna end up happening to me too. Yeah, because if you're not getting paid for it, you're gonna do you're gonna do that repair the cheapest way possible. Initially, like your mind says that, or and don't get me wrong, like person. there's still body shops that do a really good job, and there's and, and I don't want I don't want to get this misconcluded that all body shops that work with insurance companies are garbage. No, there's not. There's a lot of them that do great work, but you know they're losing money and they're 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 for just for doing the right thing, they're having to come out of pocket on each repair. Mm -hmm. I just don't think that's fair. And us as consumers, what are we allowing the insurance company to do? Yeah, we're allowing them to take control of how our cars get repaired. Mm -hmm. well, I don't think that's right. Mm -hmm. Right. I think you should be able to go to a professional. The professional should be able to do an analysis on your car and what it needs. And then and then they should be able to send the insurance company proof of everything that's needed and approve what work needs. That's what we pay insurance for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but they're like, well, the claims are through the roof. I'm like, well, I get that. But stop putting your name on every building in the valley. Right. What do we have? State Farm Stadium. But now they want to pull out of California because the claims are too high. Oh, everybody's pulling out of California. But that's bro. crazy to me that you they make so much money to have, you know, every athlete on their books to 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 sing the jingle, right? Yeah, to, yeah. And, but they can do right by the consumers, which well, is paying it, all this it, money. It, it's because it's you know it's um, it's a big corporation, and you got all these board members that make these decisions, and they they're just looking at the bottom dollar. They're not looking at the customer. They're not looking at the employee. They're not looking at either one of those. They're only looking at the bottom dollar. But that's even crazier to me, right? So for example, like if you become a preferred shop, you, you get to work on the car right away. Like you get pre-approvals within 24 hours. You can order parts right away. If it comes to my shop, I got to wait three to four days for them to send somebody out. I got to wait two more days for that guy to write me an estimate. And I got to like, we're just playing this waiting game. Yeah. But, and it's taking up real estate in your, in your, in your shop. Yeah. But so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, so then I'm, I'm looking at the insurance company goes, how does this even make sense? 
Like you have a car, a guy on a rental car. You're paying for a rental car. You're, you're paying Joe Schmo to come to my shop to look at these cars. You're spending all this money to delay the repair. Yeah. If you just come up with an agreement and said, hey, these are these are the, the stipulations that we need, everything that you can prove, as long as you have documents, pictures, measurements, everything that you need, which is what we do, and you send it in, we should be able to approve it, deny it, or ask questions about mm. it, and we can move it along. Yeah, yeah. But they're so understaffed, their 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 delays are, are ridiculous, and I'm like, you're paying more money, essentially, in the long run, for having not a partnership with the, with the body shop that does the right thing, because you're you're taking so much longer to fix these people's cars. Yeah, well, I think adjusters are like salesmen as well. Uh, did did they get a kickback? Are they getting a bonus off of what they save? I'm not. I don't. I would know. think. I, I would think a good adjuster is gonna that that can save a company a lot of money. Some of is them gonna do. Get money. They yeah. get they get rated on 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 a couple of different things. I don't know. I don't have the metrics to to to, to be yeah. Yeah. you know to give you the facts. But um, if you keep the repair costs at a certain level. I think they they're either compensated or oh they're got to be compensated or rewarded for yeah. it. Yeah, they're saving the company money, which is great. But if you're able to repair a car faster, quicker, done it, like get it approved, get it done, wouldn't that save you money in the long run? Uh, One, it, number yeah. two, if you're repairing a consumer's or your customer's car the right way, don't they want to keep you as an insurance company and continue to pay you? And then if they realize that you're shaving corners and you're not paying for stuff, you're not yeah, going to have dropped. a yeah. well, you're not gonna have a, ha a happy customer, right? Mm -hmm. Would you mm -hmm. be happy if you pick up your brand new car and all of a sudden I'm like, hey, uh, I, yeah, they, they didn't pay for the stuff to get repaired, so we just left it. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, my truck looks two different colors. I'm like, I know. Well, <laughs> why, why didn't you blend the other panel? Because the insurance company doesn't want to pay me pay to for blend it, it yeah. because they think it's too much. So here's your two-tone truck. <laughs> It's true, though. I'm telling you the truth. Yeah. And then you're like, well, I don't know. Call the insurance company. Yeah. I just don't think that's professional for me to say that to a customer. No. Yeah, because they're, they're, they're wanting it to look good. And as a consumer, I don't want my car to be done like that. No. Like, I don't want my wife's car to get in a wreck and then have to send it to a shop that's a preferred shop. Mm -hmm. And then they they butchered the truck, and then now I got to put my family in it. Yeah. I, these days, I don't send any 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 of my vehicles to a preferred shop. So that's and that's what people are starting to realize today. That yeah, I don't do. I take that control doesn't of mean it. anything, right? All it means is there's some type of contract between the the company and the insurance company. Yeah. And I, I just think there should be more transparency with how things are being done. I, I like I don't get paid for stuff unless I prove that it's being done. Yeah, you have to. You're you're like you said. You're documenting it. You mm -hmm. know, if it was in an accident, there's a police report. There's all these different things. No, but we have tools to measure it. So, the car comes in. You get an accident. The car comes in. We take pictures, measure it. We 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 have measurements of how many labor hours we should get. Like every credit card should be an hour of labor. If it if it falls on a body line, it turns into two hours. So if you look at a panel and it's got a significant dent, you can literally put ten business cards and go. I need ten hours. Everybody to gauges this. it this way. It's it's like the that's how it should be measured and okay. that's how i learned to measure it since i yeah. from you know body guys and people that have been in the industry yeah. for a long time is like think of a credit card is about an hour of body work depending on how much damage there is in that hour and then you can measure the panel and then you can go okay well if i charge 80 dollars an hour and it requires 10 hours and i'm at 800 dollars to repair this yeah is it better to repair it or to replace it and at that point you're just looking at the numbers right mm -hmm. and then we try to make whatever is more cost efficient if it's more cost efficient to repair it and we'll repair it if it's more cost efficient to replace it or simply if the manufacturer says this panel cannot be repaired it has to be replaced then we'll automatically replace it we'll automatically set it up for a replacement yeah even if it costs a little bit of money but ultimately our goal or our job is to put the car together and leave it the way it was before it was in a collision Right, so pre-collision status so mm -hmm. when a car gets in a collision my job as a collision center is to do tear down do a full discovery, so we call it blueprinting the vehicle. So we, we tear the car down so there's no more damage. We document every piece of damage, every bolt, every nut, every panel, everything, we document it. And then we put a repair plan together for the insurance company and we say, hey, this is what we think is gonna take to get this car repaired. Mm. Here's, the, here's the repair plan, here's all the pictures, here's all the data, and here's all the documents to back it up. That's good, that's good. Yeah, well, well, like what I was saying is, most and you said it too is most people think you think in general like you get in a wreck something happens you got to call the insurance and use their preferred but that's where like we did it a long time ago and it, it um 
like there's a shop up north i forgot where it's at but a big one that they send everybody to mm-hmm. I think it's off bell or somewhere somewhere <laughs> there's a lot of them yeah there's a big one and we went there probably like 10 years ago after that anything else that's ever happened i just pick a spot or whatever you know I'm, i've tried a lot of spots but i don't go to theirs because it takes longer and it's and like you said you don't get the the same service no you know it's, because they're they're and now that i know they only got so much money to play with they don't got enough money to actually do what needs to be done like one of the biggest things right so like we make money two ways if your car gets towed a lot we make money on it if your car is repairable we make money we make money on labor we make money on parts no different than any other business if you team up with them all of a sudden they go hey you can't charge for this and i'm like dude that's i built forty thousand dollars a month on that they're like well if you want us to send you business you have to start billing us for this and yeah. then you completely erase that the yeah. one it's a whole <laughs> revenue stream yep parts and, and that's what ends up happening so you know, a, a lot of times, if it's gonna let for say, let's say it's gonna be a total loss, some shops will finagle the numbers to not make it a total loss because they don't make any money on total loss. So when your car should have been deemed a total loss, now what happens? Oh shoot! Now, a so lot of people you're don't think back about your that. Car to, and you shouldn't have it back. A lot of people, and I find that I found this out by going to wow. seminars and going to meetings and wow. going to these things, and some guys goes. Yeah, dude, some of these cars, if we don't make money on total loss, the owner doesn't like it. So what we do is we'll, we'll figure out a way to make it work where it doesn't fall into a total loss and then we'll repair the car. I'm like, well, dude, there's no integrity in that. And you're That's putting, insane. And you're putting people in, in danger. And look, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it's not about whether the repair was done right or wrong, but it's the dollar amount that should have told the car out, right? And and if it's a total, it's a total. It is what it is, move on. The customer's gonna get paid for the car and then you can go get a yeah, new one. Yeah. But I don't think there's integrity in that where you know the car should be totaled and you're finagle ways to make it work, to put the car, to, to not even let in the customer now, just fixing the car and be like, all right, here's your car, ready to so roll. So if, if the car gets totaled out, I like, I'm learning about that, I like it. Uh, if the car gets totaled out, you guys get money back. You get a, like a fee for looking at it and, and tolling it. And, well, I charge and, for my services, right? So yeah. I charge for however many hours you have into it. Yeah, I have you know my admin sensor on the phone doing the paperwork, so I have an admin fee, I have a teardown fee, I have you know a curb fee, I have a lot fee, I have a yeah. storage fee. Because if 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 it's a total and I'm not working on it, I'm not making any money on it. Yeah, and that's when you got to get it out of there. I'm in the repair business now. If the insurance company decides to drag their feet and take 30 days to come pick this car up. I need to get paid for it. So in my shop, doing the math of how much a car makes me getting repaired, it's two hundred dollars a day. So if a car sits in my lot without me being able to repair it, my my fee is two hundred bucks a day. So yeah. if I had a repairable, I could continue moving that car and make that much money every day. Yeah, yeah. Now if a car is just sitting, taking on a spot, insurance, the lot, the rent, yeah. the admins having to call, calling the attorney. Well, you're probably losing more. You're, you're, yeah, you're making more than two hundred bucks off of another job, but. That's, uh, but like you said, it's just taking up space. Right. So then the insurance company finally goes, hey, the car's a total. We're going to pick it up. We finally have somebody to come get it. Uh, send us a bill. And then we're sending a bill for 30 days and they're like, $6,000. I'm like, why didn't you pick it up the next day after it got totaled? Yeah, this is not freaking free. I don't total car, people. Free I storage. And another thing is like the body shop doesn't total a car. The insurance company totals a car. Yeah, because the, they're looking at the cost of the repair. It's They're going based on their policies. Yeah. I just my job is to write a full ticket on that car, to let the insurance company know, hey, this is how much it's gonna cost. What is it like sixty percent? Every insurance company is different. Okay. So and and it changes with times, right? Sometimes if there's cars available or there's no cars available, or there's That's parts available. That's true. Like during the COVID thing, there were like there were max- some big exceptions. They were maximizing, but this is what's crazy, right? So like during COVID, nobody came to the shop. Yeah, it was all done over. There's a dude at his living room on his computer, and then I'm at the shop. And on FaceTime, showing them what's needed, and things were getting approved. Yeah, I'm like, why can we do that now to expedite the process? But you got to have somebody come to the shop. Yeah, because if things still need to be proved, I can prove those things to you. And if I can prove it, I don't expect to get paid for it. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying. So that's where the transparency yeah. comes. Like, I don't, I don't expect you to pay me if I can't prove that this needs to be repaired or replaced or whatever the case may be. Do you think that 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 this system is this way because of a lot of unethical uh, vendors yeah. in the collision industry. Totally. So it, it's, that's what started it. Yeah, right. Because now they lose the trust of the insurance company and then they treat everyone the same way. 
Well, that's unless you're a preferred vendor. Unless, well, if you're a preferred vendor, I feel like you get treated worse. But well, yeah, because you're not getting paid for half the stuff. But it's 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 mask in 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 volume. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, right? of course, yeah, it makes up. So so a bad vendor, it's like anything else. Like it's know, just one like bad apple, else. one bad apple ruins it for everybody yeah. else. And yeah. that's why we have the stigma in the automotive industry of of no transparency. Like for me, like I would go, okay, well, everybody gets paid commission and we might change this down the road for efficiency purposes but everybody that's a body tech or a painter gets paid commission the girl in the front gets paid commission so they're all there to upsell you and find more stuff um the body guys get paid commission because it's like paying somebody per piece like and we know what happens right there's this guy that's posting stuff on TikTok that's a home inspector and he's exposing all the builders and and what he's doing is he's just showing what happens when you you know sub out a bunch of work and you get the lowest price for all the work you you, you know houses are falling apart yeah, house, yeah yeah and and the same thing with that with their industry right if if you let somebody if you if you squeeze somebody enough what's going to happen they're not going to do great work it's the truth they skip they, they cut corners real good you it happens up, in our industry too you end yeah. up cutting corners right yeah. but and a lot of people suffocate on, you know, these little dollars and they try to, you know, bamboozle the insurance. I was like, look, if you get really good at processing work through the shop, you're going to make money. Like there's plenty of money to be made. It's the people that, you know, they don't have good processes. They do stops and goes. They, 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 they're constantly arguing and fighting with the insurance company over things that are not not even necessary or they try to get. Um, so I ran into a guy where a customer came to us and he goes, Hey, I went to this collision center. They had him a car for two months. I'm like, that's a long time. And he's like, yeah, they haven't even, they haven't even started repairs on it. Oh, wow. So then I started doing some digging. And what I find out is that the guy was ordering parts that were on the estimate, pre-fitting them and making it like, making it seem like they didn't fit. So then we would have to return the parts so he can order OEM parts. So you can bill for OEM parts because the markup is higher. And then and then taking so long arguing with the insurance company just to get those parts approved that ultimately don't even get approved for that car. Mm-hmm. And then getting the insurance company approved and then repairing the car. But what he doesn't realize is that the, the, the all that delay and all the amount of work that he's doing to get paid a bigger margin, he's losing because of the time he's taking to do it. Yeah, it's wasting time. Just get the damn thing done. And that's what a lot of people, that's where a lot of people lose that, right? I'm like, just get the car done, get, get be efficient, be effective, fight when you need to fight. But if you know it's not going to get approved, don't try to create all these yeah. processes yeah. for you to, to, to try yeah. to take the insurance well, company Well, you got to pick your rent. battles too. It's, it's we, you know, us in our industry in construction is, it's, it's the same exact thing is sometimes we'll get, you know, we build walls and ceilings and stuff mm-hmm. and. And the guys will be like, hey, should we just do this? We've been waiting 17 weeks or whatever. And I'm like, let's just do it. Do their job. They haven't, we're waiting on demo. Just demo the damn wall so we can build our so wall. Can I need to go. We need yep. to go. You know? And then, but if it's, uh, say, a real bad customer that wants to be jerks, mm-hmm. then I'll just, we'll just wait. Uh, same. You it's know, because they're a terrible customer up. and they don't deserve our, our like we'll 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 kick butt you're for you. going above and beyond i'll kick butt for anyone that'll kick butt for me like that and it may seem like well you shouldn't be that way no no if, no, no, no if you got my back i got you i back. got your back yeah. i'm loyal i'm loyal that's to how a fault. it should be though yeah that's how it should be but that a lot of people are not like no, that no, same no. thing with cars right like we have a guy that came in and and he's like well I'll, I'll you know this happened and i just realized that my wheel was messed up as well and i didn't realize it when it happened and i go well we'll get it submitted and he's like i need my car in two weeks it's a very simple repair, so I'm like, I can get it back to you in two weeks. So my writer goes, what do you want to do? I'll go, submit it, order everything, and let's get the car done and get it back to him. And then worst case scenario, we'll just eat the part if it doesn't happen. But we'll have a happy customer and we'll have the right repair and we'll move on. Like, do we do that with everybody? Not necessarily. Obviously, there's a cost threshold where I go, okay, I, I can break even if even if they don't cover it and I'm okay with that. Yeah. If I start losing, then we'll wait. But if it makes sense, then let's move on with the repair because it's going to cost me more money having the car sit here for two weeks than what the part that they're, we're waiting for approval is going to be. Yeah, and if you know it's like 4800 bucks or whatever, and you know it's going to be plus or minus three or 400 just, just get it done. Just get it done. As, yeah. as, as long as the margins make sense, and even if we're you know just breaking even, just get it done. Because if we sit on it even longer, it's just going to cost us more money. And that's what people don't realize. Well, how does it cost you more money? Well, one is sitting. It's taking space in my shop. Yeah. Somebody's got to tend to that car. So somebody has to call. 
Somebody has to address it. Somebody has to write on the sheet that the car's here. Somebody has to take care of that car. And guess who pays for all that? We do. Yep. So, and every time somebody comes, they do inventory every day in the, in the shop twice, right? First in the morning and then at night. Make sure we don't miss anything. Make sure there's no cars that are sitting. Um, and so I have to pay those people to make sure that they write about the car, they talk about the car, they address about the car. So if it's not moving, it's just costing me money. Mm. It's not like I can let it sit and it's just sitting. No, because somebody's constantly touching it and doing something about that car. Yeah. But if you're able to, so if I look at the math, I'm like, if that sits for a week, if I spend two, three hours of my admins talking and touching it and doing whatever, I might as well just buy the part, get the car done and get it delivered. Because at that point we will break even or yeah. or because we'll, either we'll way, I mean, how many times like that a car enters your yard that's busted up, does it leave not fixed? Like how often is that? Like like total losses? You mean? Just say a customer like you, they told the vehicle there, and it's you know the wheels busted up, can't drive all that crap. How many times will it leave your shop not fixed? Say say it's rejected or something. You know, like so the only time it gets rejected from insurance is if they don't have coverage. Yeah, so that's what I mean. Is so what one out of fifty? Yeah, if that. Yeah, so one out of a hundred. So uh, again, it goes back to like the law. Of the the it's it's in your favor. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's in your favor just to fix the damn thing. That's what <laughs> totally. I mean. Totally. Yeah, it's it's there's there's no way around it. It's just in your in your favor because there are some there's yeah there's a lot of collision places and most of them won't do it. Mm -hmm. They won't do it. I, I mean, yeah, I can tell you a couple right now. It's look, I can go on and on about the negatives and the positives. The reality and what I, what I really want to focus on is I, I what we're trying to do for the industry is it's make it that right. So like, I, and going back to discount tire, Chick Fil A, Chick Fil A, in so Chick Fil A is it's it's in the chicken business. It's a fast food chicken sandwich well, they're business, the best. right? And they're, then you I, have it doesn't even matter what they're selling. They're just okay, but you have churches. And they sell the same product. They were the best when I was a kid, bro. Well, if you grew up where I grew up, there, this, that's what that one was around. But hey, and red, the red strawberry Fanta cream soda, whatever. <laughs> but you remember that, and, yeah, and, and yeah. but when you get when you become an adult, you understand efficiency is and in, and in, in time and, yeah, and all, all that. of it, all of it. So, like by my house, there's a Chick Fil A, and there is a uh, Wendy's. Chick Fil A will have two lines out to the street. Wendy's has one person. They have three people in line. I will leave that Chick-fil-A faster. line faster and with the right order and the guy is still ordering whatever he's ordering and I wouldn't be surprised that if you order some shit that nobody orders can you pull it to the front please Dude, and I'll, every I'll time I go up. to we go to we're just we're moving churches but we're at the church right now so we've been there 4 years at the building every time we go to Wendy's it's wrong I I'm not leaving the line every time So what's the difference they're in the same industry so how did Chick fil A, so, and they're closed on Sundays, and their revenue is higher than everybody else open way seven higher. days a their week. Markup, their margins are way higher. But why? Everything. Their service, bro. Okay, you get there, and there's 10 people in the drive thru. Yeah, there's a billion people. There's dudes mean? with like these fan hats, <laughs> and like they look like half construction workers, have robots, and they they're have an iPad. To, and they're trying to stay cool. And they'll be like, uh, hi, how's it going? And then very friendly. What's your name? Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Chris. Yeah. And then it's Chris, 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 Chris all day long. Right, you go to In and Out, and their names couldn't be more accurate. You literally go to that place, and you're in, and you're out. But you look in the kitchen, and there's twenty. I don't even know how they fit twenty five people back there. <laughs> They're probably, but <laughs> uniform, clean, professional, thorough, and accurate. Yeah. Right. You go in, and you're like, "All right, Chris, what do you want?" And you're like, "I want this, 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 and that." Okay, Chris, say you're gonna have a double double with blah 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 blah. Yes. Okay, great. Next guy. Hey, Chris, how's it going? Yeah. Hey, you're going to have a blah, 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 blah. Yes. Okay, great. Move up to the window. You go to pay. And before you pay, hey, Chris, you have a blah, blah, blah. What are the chances that you're going to get it wrong? Dude, over there, and it's very slim. Numb. But you're in and out like this. You think it's just the system or the culture? Both. Yeah. I think they have great systems. Yeah. Right? They have... Well, like Wendy's compared to Chick-fil-A and in and out I mean, Wendy's is a big organization, right? They're old. Yeah, and they just got big and they stayed big, right? Is that like kind of like McDonald's? I really don't know why people don't look at it and go, well, if Chick-fil-A and In-N-Out are in the same area or the same arena as we are, what are they doing that yeah, I'm not? I'd be copying them. No, I mean, not copying them. They try to, they're trying to copy their sandwiches and One all of that my stuff, mentors but. goes, copy, cheat, and steal. And he's like, I'm not talking about like physical stuff. Yeah. Just knowledge. Yeah. Like if you're already doing something that I need to figure out, go hang out with Chris for two days. 
Go make friends with Chris and figure out what Chris is doing. Or just learn what Chris is putting out there. Mm -hmm. If it's working for Chris, it can work for Oscar. It can work for anybody. Well, if it's working for In-N-Out and Chick-fil-A, why don't these companies adopt it? Yeah. They don't care. They're making enough money. Why? They say if you buy a Chick-fil-A franchise, you become a millionaire right away. You buy yourself a ticket to become a millionaire. One, one franchise, well, mm -hmm. you'll make a million. You'll, yeah. But because of the service, because of the food, because of the consistency, you can go to the bathrooms and they always look clean. There's never a homeless guy outside. That's what I want to create in the collision I space. I love it. And, and, and we still got a lot of work to do, but slowly but surely, um, with the help of obviously the consumers and understanding the difference between a preferred shop and an independent shop. And there's a lot of really good independent shops. I mean, I'm not the only one, and I'm not saying use me all the time. Use all the oh, independent well, no, we shops. We need to use you all the time, bro. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. But if you're not close to me and we're inconvenient, look for somebody in your local to you that's an independent shop. Feed those guys versus the guys that are with the insurance company, and we can probably correct what's happening, right? At least have some type of transparency and, 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 and morals and, 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 and something that functions right for everybody. It's not about just me winning. It's let's both win. Let's I, I think I think like when you think of Chick-fil-A and in and out, they were disruptive. You know? They're do, they're doing something that everyone nobody else is doing. And they're they're even doing stuff different themselves, right? Mm -hmm. But like In and Out's still family owned, mm -hmm. right? Uh Chick-fil-A, it's obviously it's uh I think it's uh, maybe it's still owned by the same person it's franchised but yeah, yeah it's franchised mm -hmm. um but basically they're not big corporations right and but they're disruptive they're doing you know they're 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 christians they're mm -hmm. you know they're doing like you go to chick-fil-a i don't know if you know but they have every one of them has a big uh table they usually have one at least one big massive table that holds about 12 or 15 people and it's handmade by like uh uh, kids that are in juveniles or oh, I didn't know that foster yeah dude I didn't and, know that and some of them they uh, uh, this is I mean I haven't looked at one in about five or six years but they would have the signatures of the kids underneath them oh really yeah. I have no idea they do all these organization things so like not only are they got good structure good systems and all that stuff is the things they're doing for the community they're, they're giving back they're, they're investing you back can. yeah they're sowing seeds well anybody can but they of choose course. to correct and that's the right thing to do. Uh, uh, yeah. Right? Like, I'm, we're not, I don't consider myself a big, uh, you know, organization. But, like, we just you did a van for RAM, right? It's raising Arizona's men. So what they do is uh, kids that are in the in the foster care system, uh, when they leave the foster care system, that's it. I know. When you turn 18, it's like, all right, you're an adult. Figure it out. Dude, me with parents, I was like, what do I do? Right? I can't imagine something going up in the foster care so with no parents, no father, no father figure, it's somebody to guide them in life. And then all of a sudden they turn 18 and they cut, they literally just cut you off. Yeah, yeah. And then you're on your own. So Ram comes in and teaches this, coaches them, trains them, gets them through how to fill out resumes, how to get jobs, how to be active, nice. how to be good members of society. So we, we painted a whole van for them not so long ago at no cost. We're like you guys are a great foundation let's do that and we'll take care of it at no cost yeah, we're doing yeah. backpack drives um uh, for kids and and teachers that are less fortunate that don't have what they need so we're doing that right we do um hometown heroes so uh for all the veterans and stuff like that we're very involved in that and you can do that right you can do that as a company not only is it very fulfilling but it's good for the business and it's good for the community right who ultimately who feeds us yeah the community yeah. does yeah. Why not take care of them? Yeah. Right. It's like you said, you have my back. I'll have yours in any way I can. And I think that's the way we're trying to do it right now. I'm trying to launch two things. I went to the, the Datos thing and, and the numbers that they were bringing up are um, crazy numbers uh, of how many people have. They're called food insecurities. And it's not an insecurity. It's just you can't afford it. You, you can't say food, food. Food oh, insecurity. So, like, p part of like Bidenomics, inflation, all that stuff. Just people not eating. Just they're they're showing how many people are struggling with food right now. Wow. And, and so, to like, buy instead food, of getting two or three meals, or maybe have one. Maybe. And it's they're talking about cost of living, how much everything's cost, how much everything's blah 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 blah. Yeah. We have over a million people here that don't eat in Arizona. It's insane. A million people and we're that over here don't sending eat. Sending billions to other countries. It's crazy. It's insane. Think about it. Like people are not eating. Like that's a big deal. So like I know you had Andy here, and he does the one bag at a time. And uh -huh. I think that's a phenomenal foundation. And I think more of us can do that. So what we're trying to do is, I after learning today, I want to figure out a way to 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 put a program together where we can feed some people. 
Yeah, let's do it, dude. We used to, we were doing it a lot. We feed a lot. Really? Yeah, yeah. We got. I told Annie too. We got. We we know the organizations where we can get the food. We do. We f- I we fed. Uh, we f- we feed in a lot of people. We do big back back drives. Yeah, yeah. You and usually what it is is it's our church, but I like extreme is the yeah, big yeah, funding yeah. part of it. Um, well, yeah, let I'm me totally, know. I I'm love totally doing that. Giving. I love doing that stuff, dude. Yeah. I'm in a networking group with Andy, and and New Leaf is in there, and um, I think we've done two feedings for their home their men's homeless shelter mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and i can't tell you how good it feels there's actually a guy that works right next to my shop i had no idea he works at the business next to my shop and he's homeless i saw as we we're feeding i was like where'd you get that shirt he goes i work there yeah i go you do and he goes yeah he goes you guys are right next to us i go yeah and we were doing the, the feeding and i had no idea that these, there's this many people without a home yeah and there's there's so We've, I don't know, we probably fed a thousand people more, two, three, five thousand people, whatever it is, hundreds and hundreds of kids. And um, with, the, with the homeless, you see it, it's, you know, you know, you got like mental disorders, mm-hmm. you get the drug addicts, but then you also got like normal people that just really had a hard time. They got their ass kicked. And, yeah, and, and they lost everything. Yeah. You, whole families, bro. Oh my God, that's the worst. When you see like, the worst is when you see a single mom with like two, three, four mm-hmm. kids and there's nothing wrong with any of them. But they can't get off their feet, and the government won't help them. The lady that spoke today—that's that's what happened. There started forty. There's forty women that are helping from Pennsylvania that are that are started a foundation to help people with fight hunger, and she's one of them. She told her story, and she's like, "We we lived in a house with no electricity, no power, no no heat, no nothing." It's like imagine that in Pennsylvania with two kids, Freezing. and then she goes, "I I feel guilty because I was I would find reasons to be mad at my kids, so they would think that because I'm mad they're not eating." Can you imagine that? Can you imagine you coming up with stories to tell your kids why they're not eating and usually make it a negative experience? And she goes, I, I didn't know what else to do. I just mm-hmm. didn't want them to think that I couldn't do it and that I was failing them. Yeah. Dude, that, and there's so many people. That's a defense mechanism. Uh, yeah, it's, it's. But there's so many people like that. You're talking about a simple meal. Do we, we as Americans, we waste 40% of our food. 40% Maybe of our more, food. Bro. Think uh, about that. My kids, I feel like they waste everything. We talk about that way. I, I, I was talking to my wife about, you know, like we normally go out and we buy the kids their own meals. And I'm like, no more. Well, but they leave it for leftovers. They don't want to eat it. The no, next they days. won't eat it because it's, you can buy something new. We have a back fridge. Like we mm-hmm. have like different fridges and stuff. But like if it goes, I don't even like putting stuff in the, we have like a little second kitchen Because you have to thing. throw it out. No, they forget about it. It's yeah. like, leave it in the front. And, and it'll it, go bad and then, then nobody will eat it. They don't want it. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, it's been there a day too long. Like, who cares? Just eat. And then I'm in there trying to eat it because <laughs> I want to waste the money. No, and, <laughs> and, and, and I'm dieting and stuff I now, up, so I can't even do it. I grew up where, you know, leftovers were great. No, we ate everything. Yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah. There was no leftovers because you ate it all. Mm-hmm. True. But now, now, I mean, we're, we're, we're lucky that we are where we are, but... Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to still instill some of those things into my kids. And they're like, you don't waste food. Like yeah, it, it, yeah, people yeah. work really hard to get the food on the table. Like you don't waste it. You got to eat it, preserve it and, and learn how to value it. Because I think that's huge, right? If you learn how to value food, what else can you learn how to value? Yeah. You know, the thing is, like you said, is as consumers, we waste. And there's like a lean principle, you know, that you probably heard it like just in time. Mm-hmm. And so like if you order product or whatever, you can order just in time. We have just enough. Yep. And I think we got to get that way with food. And so like I was talking to um, a home builder and he was telling me that like the bigger we have a nice house. And the, so the custom houses, what's happening, what he's noticing is that because uh, I think a lot of Americans are starting to get healthier. Mm-hmm. Not a lot, but like as you make a little more money, oh, I think well, as you do course. better in life, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, f- you figure out like I got to get healthy. You learn it's a huge things. part of you being successful. Yeah, you can run like you can like being last healthy. all day. Um but like uh he was like hey like what's happening is their pantries are getting smaller right and and so like i put a big fridge and a big freezer and then i have a fridge and a pantry and all this stuff but he's i put all this stuff and he's like the people like these days are not even putting this much Mm -hmm. in the big houses he goes they're they're putting smaller pantries for less food and they're not doing the big fridge freezer no more because everything that goes in the freezer is not good food. It, well, what happens is it's either boxed mm-hmm. or they leave it in there for a year and they waste it and throw it away. And so they're they're concentrated on less boxed items and more fresh items mm-hmm. just in time. Yep. Get what you need that week, you know, and and eat it and then do it again the Dude, next that's, week. That's a whole nother conversation for another day is just food. What's in our food today versus 20 years ago? Yeah. Right. Where is it coming from? How is it grown? All the diseases the shit they put it's in causing. It. RFK talks a lot about that. 
You know, I'm a fan of RFK. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm like kind of shocked that he, he. I mean, shocked that he dropped out, and he's, he's, you know, whatever he's doing. But well, he had to drop out. I think he had a good. I think he had a good run. I just, I, 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 I don't understand how if you're, if you're an independent, you, you're not on the ballot. You have to fight to be on the ballot. Yeah. And he, even though you have enough votes, you, it becomes almost impossible. It's, well, to, it's, yeah, it's a two party system, and, and they're going to do anything. And, and plus, the Democrats don't like him. You know, my they despise him. My business partners know him. And uh, have you seen his physique? He's mad. He's yoked, dude. He's Jack, he's seventy year old, twenty yeah. pull ups. The guy is he's ripped. Like yeah. that guy needs to be in charge of our food system and well, our that's health what department. They're hoping. I, that's what I'm saying. But that guy needs. Look, no disrespect to people that are big bone, but you shouldn't be running the health. And if you have, you know, no, it's true. It's like you don't you, have like, the right habits. It's like to you do go it. to the gym and get a trainer, and they're you know, four hundred pounds. Not, yeah, and I'm, it's like they can't even teach you how. They can't run with you. My, I got a trainer. Yeah. He runs with me. Yeah, I think he's using me to just go run. <laughs> um, he goes to the gym and he comes and runs with me and charges me. Dominic, if you're watching, bro, you owe me. <laughs> But look, I, I I get it, and 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 there's coaches and there's 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 personal trainers that are overweight and they know everything about how to lose weight. They just don't do it themselves. To me, I just can't buy it. No, you know, it's I lazy, just can't bro. because you don't have the. You're That's like saying you can make money and you just don't do it. You just live broke. But it's like you tell me how to make money and you're broke. Yeah, right? like, like you're like not you gonna listen said, to me. Like, I'm like, dude, pff, I won't even anyone that tells me about anything that doesn't. That like, they're not doing it. That they're not doing it. I'm not even li like. You, you, you just how? don't even stop talking, bro. And it's not rude, but it's like the truth. But the, <laughs> and that's the problem about today, right? Like the tooth hurts more yeah. than it was before, right? And now you tell people the truth, and they're the like, feelings hurt, and well, they're now you're crying. getting sued, and now you're like a bad person, and yeah. now you end up on TikTok with one sentence that you said, and you're like, no, I didn't mean it. That <laughs> you're blackballed and stuff. But it's just like it's, canceled. It's, but it's the truth. It's 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 the truth. Like I I get financial advice from people that make a lot more money than I do. Yeah, any kind of advice. From well, no, because if they're not, if not I'm not taking marriage. Oh yeah, from people that are doing doing well. better. Yeah, marriage. You get a couple that's been married 30, 40 years. Listen, if you're if you're going in divorce and you're trying to give me advice on my marriage. Keep that to yourself. That's why I tell people, dude, I don't give marriage advice. I'm, I'm not like going through a divorce or nothing, but I'm not the greatest at it. Keep that I'm to a yourself. better worker. Yeah. So I would never be like, yeah, you should do this. No, but ask me about work, about making some money and stuff. I'll, I'll the only you. the advice I give on marriage is I just tell you what I'm doing. I'm not going to tell you what you I'm should at. do. Yeah. And I'll go, hey, I've done these things with my wife and that's gotten us closer. I've done this with my kids and it's gotten us closer. We go on a date night, like tomorrow's date night. Nice. Right. We have weekly date nights, my wife and I, either Fridays. When we can, we'll try to sneak two of them in a week. I don't think people understand how big of a difference that makes. And I'm talking like a date night, date night. Not like a regular, let's take the wife out to dinner. Like you go out, you dress up, you you flirt, you go to a dinner, you go to a movie. Like you do something fun with them and you bring that relationship back. Well, people forget that that's who started everything. Mm -hmm. You and her. That was the beginning. That was, And that's still it. But we get so caught up in being parents. All of a sudden, you're the mom, I'm the dad, and what's going on with us? Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. You gotta. That's the biggest relationship you gotta save. So many people are worried about their kids. This backwards. Fix bro. you first. Is it's it's the the airplane thing, right? Well, the, the kids are gonna go away. The oxygen comes out. Exactly. You don't put it on your kids because then you're gonna pass out, and then your kids screwed without you. Yeah. Yeah. You need to put it on you because you're the more rational, more educated. You're the adult, and now you know what to do. Mm -hmm. Right. So if the parents are good, the kids are always going to be good. Yeah. 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 Because you're become you're the example. Yeah. Who are your kids looking at? When your kids are going to leave you, they're going to go get married. Yeah. God but you, willing. But you, they're going to they're going to go marry some like depending on what you portray. Yeah, if to you're them. beating your wife and they're going to marry like somebody that does yeah, the same thing. No, for all. But if you're going on dates with your wife, if you're caring about they're going to expect it. Right. My, I have three girls. So and, and me too. Look. Six years ago, I have a six year old. So six years ago, different guy different perspective different mentality first girl changed tremendously second girl changed even more, more i just had more. my third i'm a completely changed. Nice. i don't even drink anymore yeah that's good i don't drink me neither I'm fasting today i'm like I'm doing I know. All we'll these, talk about that we're doing all these things huh yeah 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 and 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 they're like what are you doing i go i i i'm somebody told me that i'm gonna be the i'm the exam the prime example of what a man should be like to my girls that that's changed awesome. everything about how i operate how who i hang around with who i'm with 
what I talk about, how I represent myself, how I represent my company, my accomplishments, how I push myself, how I, my discipline, all of it. It all has to do with how I'm pictured to my kids because I want them to marry a badass, right? Yeah. That makes them happy. My job is to make my wife happy and be the badass for my wife. Mm -hmm. And if I can do that, my kid, hopefully my kids will follow that and they'll see that, hey, this type of man does this, 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 and that, brings this to the table, and this is how we feel about it. Totally. And 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 all everything that I'm doing, all this, the podcast, the, the business, and everything that I do, the fasting, like it's for my kids, right? For them to see that that's what a man should be like, or at least my my uh, my definition of what a man should be like. And I think that's so important. But dating your wife and going on dates even after you've had kids, that's everything because that's who started it all. Those are the, the, those are the heads of the house. If you don't have those people happy and together, you can't expect the rest of the house to be the same. Yeah, that's what, I mean, you, you know, like a lot of marriages, like there's a lot of divorces when the kids grow up. Mm -hmm. As soon as they grow up and start moving out, then like- Because they really, they don't know what to do. There's nothing in they're common They're sitting no there awkward going, there's no one, what, no kids to fight about. What do you wanna do? There's no kids to fight over. Yeah, what do you wanna, well, there's no distractions. Yeah. There's no, really there's no out of the, there's no out of the argument. There's no out of the relationship. There's not something that keeps you busy, and you, but yeah, that's totally. that's the wrong way to approach it, man. Mm -hmm. You gotta you gotta take care of your, your the, what started it all. You and your wife. I love it. Healthy, mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever you believe in. You guys gotta be on the same page about all of it. Sexually too. Oh, I mean, our men were that's yeah. our love language for the most part. So that's a huge it's thing. A huge part. And and you know that's something that I've talked to my wife, and it's cool because. Mm -hmm. She realized that my love language, which is that, the physical, right? And then I realized her love language, which is the cards and the letters and the things. And I'm still working at it. I'm, not a, I'm not a great gifter. Uh, but if I'm going to, and I have to understand, and this is where the maturity and the growth comes into place. It's like, okay, it's there's two of us. It's not just me, 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 me. You got to give some, you got to take some, you got to give some, and you got to take some. And the, what I've learned is the more you get good at giving, the more you end up getting without even asking for it, mm -hmm. right? And it, and once you become that becomes a thing again, then now you're back to being kind of boyfriend, girlfriend, mm -hmm. you're, you're flirting, you're having a good day, you're having a good time, and it becomes really fun to be around each other. It's when that goes away and you turn into that that's working all the time, running a business, is dealing with 17, 20 employees, they're driving you nuts, you get home, you're drained. And the last thing you wanna do is be this happy, joyful person, yeah, yeah. but when your wife, flirts with you, takes care of you, and is your biggest cheerleader, that becomes easy to do. Mm. You know what I mean? Totally. It, it becomes easy to come home it. and be like, hell yeah, I'm home, I'm hanging out with my wife and my kids, and you enjoy it, versus sitting in the driver going, fuck, I'm home now. Mm -hmm. uh, let me scroll through TikTok real quick. Yeah, take like 20 minutes to and go inside. And then I go inside, yeah, and yeah. then you go inside and you're an angry person. Yeah. You automatically carry that energy, and. It, but if if the wife is good and and, and again it, it, that usually is your happy place right like me getting home after work if it should if, be if i being your home your should home be should be your happy place. place it should be your that's your domain that's you know that's that's when we built our home it's it's uh it's your sanctuary it's we made we literally made it like our sanctuary the way we designed it everything it's where like, you can be free yeah this everything. is home like yep. your safest place there is it should be your happiest place it should be everything you know the, the, uh you know it, and it not, and like for us too, it's like not only it's our home, it's our church as well. Not mm -hmm. to say like it's a church, but it's like we we live. It's your that temple. At home. That's yeah. your that's where you. That's, yeah. that's where the energy lives. Everything. That's where everything lives. All yeah. of it. All of it. I love it. I love but, it. But but I, I think I think taking care of your biggest cheerleaders makes a huge difference in in, in how you operate and and how you're out there. And you know, we, we talk to my wife all the time about people that are unfaithful or whatever, and I'm like. I, I don't have any business and to be you know I have everything I need yeah I go there's there's physical attraction and, and and the sex is there I don't need to go look for it somewhere else I go I don't think you understand how much trouble it is to go out and look for it somewhere else not that's only that's is it trouble that's just trouble you just said not it. only is it trouble it's a whole full-time job to do that yeah you gotta go and play a game and act and lie to a bunch of people and, and then I tell my wife I go look I okay worst case scenario you find out something's happening. What's going to happen? You're going to divorce me. I got three girls. You know what they're going to think? They're going to hate me? you, bro. They're my world. Yeah. I, c I cannot. You hurt their mom? I could not stomach my girls hating me. Yeah. Like, that's something that I just could never do. I would never do anything to hurt them. 
physically or emotionally. And, and that would be the biggest negative. I go, okay, let's talk about the, the, the um, um, materialistic side. I go, you're gonna take half of my paycheck right away. Probably half of the company, probably half of this, probably half of that. Where is that gonna leave me? Now I gotta move. I wouldn't gonna be able to afford the house. I might end up where in some shitty apartment. You're gonna end up in some, yeah. I go, what makes you think <laughs> that me coming here as an immigrant, working at a door-to-door company for nine years, failing and failing and failing and working so hard to get to where I'm at, that a broad's gonna like that's gonna take that away from yeah, me. No. I go, no. It doesn't matter how hot they are, how sexy they are, if they say the right stuff. Dude, I got a temple at home that I, I just can't lose over yeah, that. Yeah. I go, no way. When you fought too hard to, to it'll to, never happen. You fought too hard to build what you guys have together and and now you the fight continues to keep it together. But it's not even a fight anymore. I well, got everything yeah. that we fight for, everything that you, you wanna you why do you date? Because you wanna find somebody that's your soulmate, your cheerleader, somebody that yeah, that the, yeah. the, the, the completes you. I already have that. I don't need to go look around for Totally. For what? Yeah. It just doesn't even make sense. It's like owning a business and you're working on your business and it feeds you and it pays you good money. And then you're like, I'm going to go fuck around with this other stuff. But you got you got this beautiful business that you're 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 thriving in and it's growing and it's got room for growth. And why are you going to take your attention over there? Mm hmm. Again, now if you're looking at investments and your business is dialed yeah, up, then yeah, yeah totally, right? Yeah. That's but as far as like if, if if you're building your business and you start plan B and then plan C and then plan D, what happens to you? Yeah. I've had a lot of people that never got their business off the ground because the minute they started making a little bit of money, now they're expanding and growing and doing other shit that doesn't make any money. And then their business falls apart. Too early. They're doing it too and early. Now they don't have any like other you businesses. Said they're not. They're not. The foundation's not set. Maybe that was a wrong analogy, but no. You, but you it's get still. The, it's still an analogy. You know, it's for the business people that are listening. It's an analogy. Like don't, don't go outside of your wheelhouse until you're ready to freaking drive the car. Well, they say burn your bridges, right? Yeah. Like when you go to a battle, burn your bridges, and you have two options: go out there and win, or you're gonna die, and that's it. There's no retreating. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There, there's. I, I read a book a while back. I, I can't quote you on the title but it talks about an army that would show up and burn their boats oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it would show up to battle and, and yeah because they couldn't leave they didn't want to leave that's an actual a, a war that it's, was, a, it's, yeah. a, it's a it's, yeah they it's, didn't, it's was it when they it's came to america in no it's i think Where it's a european it? country no i know that one yeah they didn't want to leave and so they had to stay and fight the war no they go we don't have an option to retreat if i burn the boats that's what I mean. I you yeah, take the they can't they have take to fight the mentality of of quitting. Yeah, you you you're There's quitting. No, quit. no longer they an can't option. leave. They gotta fight. You either fight and win. Yeah, or you're gonna die. Yeah, well, I, guess how hard they're gonna fight if there's they the, burn the bridges or that bridges. I, the I was just uh, either I uh, was watching something on it or I read something on it. The same thing. Yeah. yeah, burn the boats. Yeah. So if you're that committed, it's not gonna go away. Yeah. But if you always have that option, right? You have this other side business and. If the initial business doesn't start doing well, all of a sudden you're jumping ship. Yeah, you yeah. gotta be committed. Who do you who do you listen to? Like as far as uh, do you listen to any podcasts or any any kind of like or like teachings or eBooks or, or like uh, I'm doing a lot of I'm doing a lot of eBooks. Um, and 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 you look, I came in. Uh, I was an ESL student in high school, so my reading comprehension is not Mexico. Okay, Chihuahua, Chihuahua. And so came here when I was 13. I'm gonna be 40 this year. I just became a citizen. Nice. Last month, dude, that's amazing. That's the thirtieth of the so last cool. month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me. That's a, huge. It took me a really long time to go through the process. Yeah, and and, but you, and get it done. You're patient. Well, we don't have any other option. Well, you do. But 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 you know what's crazy? I learned how to build a business and do everything without it. And um, somebody asked me, "Is like, would you change? Would you want to be born here?" I was like, "No." Because I wouldn't be, who be you are. I wouldn't be who I am today yeah. if it wasn't for all the hardships and all the shit that I've had to deal with yeah. and figure out. So, and I, I give my my parents a lot of credit for that because I can't imagine my mom and my dad were thirty years old when they moved here. They had me at thirteen. They had my brother who was three years old, and they had to leave their town. I go, I, I don't understand how you guys just one day were like, we're leaving, lock the door, leave everything behind, load up a nineteen sixty seven that my dad had Chevy. And said we're moving to Phoenix, Arizona. Were they coming on a work visa or something? They initially came in a work in a work visa, and then you know what happens to yeah. that? It gets yeah. it doesn't get extended, and blah 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 blah. Yeah. And, 
and and for Mexicans, there's not a clear path to citizenship. It's not like you can walk into an immigration office and go, okay, I'm here for six months, but I'll like to stay. I got a job. I'm, I'm a good citizen, blah, blah, yeah, blah, blah. That's a tough one. Like, I never understood why it's like that with Mexico. Because we're there's, so close. There's, huh? Because we're so close. Is that what it is? I don't know. Well, I mean, there's clear paths for like people from India, from all over the mm -hmm. world. It's it's insane, but yeah, uh, you would have less immigration mm -hmm. issues if you just like put a little system together. Uh, maybe they like it like that. I think so. Yeah, I Cre think there's, yeah, there's, there's like it, it like creates that. a lot of. Uh, I mean, that's all we talk about during election year. Yeah, immigration, immigration. protect the border, immigration, yeah. protect the yeah. border. Immigration. Yeah, they like it, leaving it open a little bit, and that way they can. But if 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 you had a clear immigration path. Where you can vet people, which you can, you still do it now for citizenship, and you can vet them when they come in, and you can say, "Hey, look, you work for the next five years. Don't be, be a law." Dude, you can get, they can get their their, their fingerprints, everything. their eye everything. scan, everything right there at the border. Everything people are worried about yeah. can go away. Yeah, right. And then number two is, well, we, I I've been paying taxes since I got a job because the IRS will give you a tax ID number if you request it even if you're illegal they'll give you a tax yeah, ID yeah, number yeah, for yeah. you to file taxes so uh, ITIN is yeah, it ITIN? Yeah. Uh, you can All get right. it for your business so yeah. that's what I ended up learning so when when you know I wasn't legal and, and I was like I need to figure some shit out because I, I tell the legal dudes today I because uh, you're talking about this I tell them pay your taxes of course. I go, even if, because they don't want to pay anything, right? No, no, no. Pay your taxes. And not, I'm not saying all of them, but a majority of illegals don't want to pay taxes. Um, but I tell them, pay your taxes. They will leave you alone, guys. You it's not be necessarily left they leave you alone. When, if there's an, an ever an amnesty or you there's, can ever prove an it. If yeah. there's ever an opportunity for you to you're become, a good citizen. then be you're like, hey, here's 15 years of taxes. Yeah. And they're going to go, oh, wow, cool. You're ready. You're already here. Yep. Done. But uh, there's a lot of people that are doing that. Um, for me, I got lucky with Obama. He passed the Dream Act. I don't know if you're familiar yeah. with that. Mm -hmm. So kids, are, you know, people yeah, have been here since they were young, and yep. and we really didn't have a choice, and we didn't mm -hmm. really had. So I submitted for um, citizenship when I was 13, and then when you turn 21, you become an adult. But because the process takes so long, when yeah. you become an adult, you're no longer qualified. Are you, th are you thankful for that for Obama? For what he did, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's huge. I, I, I wish there was a, I wish there was. A, I didn't know. I actually, I thought he didn't do anything good. But now that you're telling me this, that's amazing. It's huge, right? So that that changed because you're the one person. Like you could, if you were the only person. But if you look at my demographic for dreamers, we're unbelievable citizens. We're unbelievable contribute. Like we that, have that homes. A, that age group. We have homes. Is it have, that age group? Yeah, the, everybody that. If you look at everybody that that got that's in the Dream Act or, yeah. or, or or became that, we all have businesses, wow. homes, uh, married, like uh, 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 um, six figures, like. The demo that demographic alone is insane. Imagine if you did that for everybody, right? I got some numbers today of Hispanics alone, right? So what do you got? in Arizona, alone. What, what organization are you part of? You said um, I think you said you were a president of something or something like so that. So yesterday was my last day running my chapter and and build more power, which is BNI. It's a networking group. Um, last year we did six point four million in in business and shared business in the group. Um, I was able to hit eight million this year. Uh, what do you mean, like uh, eight million? Your company with all them, or no? The whole, so we or have no the whole. So the shared business, right? So there's there's BNI is uh, Business Network International. No, it's a big group. Yeah, yeah. So there's we have sixty nine members right now, and once you fill a seat, you can't get anybody else with that category. So if you go in there as a drywall company, there's no other drywall yeah, company. Yeah. But there'll be a plumber and a literally there's a yeah like guy one of everything. Of everything, so we have sixty-seven members now. But that's one chapter. There's different chapters in There's Arizona. There's eighty-five in Arizona. Okay, yeah, because I know some. I know a few people in BNI. They would. It's so smart. Me. If you do it right, and you got to go, go right there chapter, one day a week, right? One day a week. So yeah. we went every Wednesday for two hours, um, and uh, it's brilliant. It's it's if especially if you own a small business so, and, you, and you're running the right right chapter. So you said uh, the companies last year. The sixty-nine companies did like six and a half million in shared business. With the six point four million. Now, when you say business. shared business, that's like refer back to yeah. each other. Mm -hmm. We have an app. We track everything. Oh that, wow! Do that place is run better than most businesses. I took so much from that. The way that chapter is ran, and then applied it to my business. Nice, nice accountability, positive, supportive attitudes, uh, traditions and innovations, like lifelong learning, like all the stuff that we make people. Um, get discipline on in the chapter to get the chapter to thrive is the same things that you can do in your business, mm. right? And they're really good at tracking numbers, tracking numbers, tracking numbers. So last year, again, we did 6.4 million. Th this year, we were able to hit 8 million. 
That's pretty good. Share share revenue. Are you kidding like, me? That's huge. Everybody's networking. That's that's huge. I got over two hundred thousand uh, dollars in in that this year in business. Yeah, yeah. From that chapter. Yeah, and then other people that small because there's a lot of small companies. Yeah. Yeah, there's big. I mean, look, the insurance agent, agents are are because they're in residual. Yeah. They're putting in a million dollars in thank you for closed business at the end of the year. Hmm. They've received a million dollars in 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 either residual or new business at the end of the year from being in that chapter. It's great. So I did. So I'm build more power. That's really the only organization I'm in. Um, yeah. And then you got a, I think you got an award recently. So I got, I, I got a Hispanic, Hispanic Businessman of the Year award. Is that, what is that? Like what organization is that? What state? It's called Premios Nosotros and it's, it's a local company. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So I got awarded for that. That was pretty cool. Um, since then we've been featuring a handful of different uh, uh, places. So we've been carrying, catching some really cool traction. We were featured in Money Radio, which that was really cool. And then we've been um, on a couple of different TV stations. So I think Channel 3, AZ Family, they're uh, starting to feature us as the car experts. So we go on and we tell people what they need to do before oh, really? holiday. Yeah. So we just did a segment, a life segment, uh, which got a ton of, 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 of views, which was phenomenal. But they come to the shop and they go, hey, we're going on a holiday. Uh, what do you think? What, what should people have or how can they be ready? Um, for when they travel, right? So make sure you have a spare tire, make sure you have a, an emergency kit, make sure you have your your tires checked, your brakes checked. So we give them advice. Uh, so we're becoming the company that people trust cool. to go to. And then um, um, the Arizona Republic did a piece on us, which was really, really cool. So I'm really excited about that. And that, I'm here with you. Yeah, no, that's amazing. Yeah, I seen the, the award and I was like, man, this guy's, you know, you're killing the game, dude. Like, it's you're, just you're working, doing, man. It's yeah. just, and then people. Well, you're putting it. You what? Like you're putting in the time. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of people aren't willing to put in the time. You know, you're putting the time. You're living a clean life. You know, a clean, honest life. Yeah. And I think that's huge because there's, totally. there's a lot of there's a lot of shysters out there. There's a lot of shysters out there, bro. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people that make excuses. You know, you know how I many? Uh, like, the fact that you're you know, you're you're an immigrant from Mexico, it's like that's an excuse. Mm -hmm. That could be an excuse. Everything's an excuse. You know, I had my operations manager quit on Monday. You want to know what I did? Hmm. I started fasting and I had a meeting on Tuesday and we're back on track. Yeah. So what? So you said you started fasting and you said you told, I asked you if you wanted to eat lunch. Did we had two vendors today bring us lunch at the same time? That's sick. Raising games yeah. in Panera. That's awesome. I was like, oh my god, uh, there's a lot of food. So what? I'm really big on discipline and and I'm lucky to uh, to be able to understand when I'm off of it. So yeah, I yeah. like I'm very consistent with the original. Right? Like I I bought a cold plunge two years ago. I've been using it every day. I've been it's saying I'm gonna probably miss ten days in two years of not being in the cold plunge. Is it a good one? It's phenomenal. Like is yours is a good one? It well, gets, you don't I, have to put ice, right? Because that's expensive. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's dumb. Yeah. That's that's the biggest inconvenience you can think of. Yeah. Is buying a cold plunge which that you one, gotta go get the ice. Which one do you got? I bought AC as a local company. I like to buy local. The, the big igloo thing? No, it's it's like a bathtub. So it looks like a see. giant bathtub. I think it's called AZ Arctic Tubs, I think they're called. I'll give them a shout out. Um, but they're a local company. They came in, they installed it, they set it up. It's super easy to clean. I literally just f opened the flap. I Art. get in for five minutes. I get out. Is it Arctic Plunge? No. Maybe. But they're lo they're local. Oh, we gotta find these guys. It was like I can send you the link. I'll send you a link. I'll have my wife. My my wife actually bought it for me on my birthday. That was my my gift. But it's you know I read a lot about it. I read about what it does to you. I read about what it does to your body. For me, it's more of a mental thing than anything. <laughs> It's mental strength. Like if you're able to get in it in yeah, the morning, conquering it. dude. Get like right now we're going into the winter. It's the toughest time to get in it. It's mm. in my garage, so I open my garage and it's it's freezing. Forty five degrees in the garage, and then the water's forty seven degrees. Yeah, it's not like you're getting out of the water and warming up. No, like in the summer's <laughs> great, right? Like I get in my garage. My garage one hundred twenty yeah, degrees. I mean, you're morning. drying right there. Yeah. yeah, you get out and you feel great. You get in and you feel great because you're refreshing. But like in the winters, like then I go in naked, so I like take my clothes off in my garage and I'm like. Then I set the timer. I was like, I got to get in. And then I just jump in. How long do you do it for? Uh, four to five minutes. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Every I, day. Yeah. Uh, but it's the craziest mental that's block. So cool. It's the craziest challenge to do first yeah. thing in the morning. Like you open the flap and you feel the cold air come out. And then you just sit in there like, all right, what should I do? 
And then I go 10. So I have a, a timer to get in. And it's funny because it's it's four minutes and 10 seconds. So I give myself 10 seconds to get in. Because you're going in <laughs> slow. No, I just like, I, I go, I got to be in the water. No, like at four minutes. Yeah. So I do my full four minutes. So in my brain, I'm like, I got 10 seconds to do it. So I'll go five. Fuck, I got to get in. And then I just jump in. So is this every day? Yeah, every morning. So every morning you got to get to that mental yeah. breakthrough. Yeah, and I it gets it. easier at times. But you know what? The cool thing is that my four-year-old and my six-year-old get in it by themselves. Oh, yeah. With they see me. So I'll get yeah. in and they're like, Daddy, can I do it? I'm like, yeah. Yeah. They'll go in for 10 seconds and get out. Yeah, but they're getting used to it. But they're doing it. I didn't even ask them to. Yeah, do. they're watching it. Now it's like, and that's another thing that we're talking about, right? Like you're you're the example. Mm -hmm. And I work out and I run and all this stuff. And guess what they're doing with me now? Yeah. Yeah. They're running and they're working out and they're developing all these good habits. But the cold plunge is a must. I uh, I don't tell me like it's not I'm not like the CrossFit guys when they talk about it all the time. Like I don't really talk about it all the time. I just know it's a benefit for me. And if there's somebody's interested in it, I'm like, dude, I should fucking sell cold plunges. Like I, I think they're phenomenal. Yeah. And it's no, super yeah, easy to take I, care of. I, I, uh, there's a few guys I know that do them. Mm -hmm. And he has, and he's, and he's going. And I've, I've jumped in my pool, in a, you know, when it's cold. Yeah. But it's not the same. No. I know it's not the same. That's cold. Not even but close to the yeah, same. Yeah, because it's like freezing in a cold plunge. It's 47 degrees. Yeah. So, some are even lower than that. Salt River is like 65 degrees. Yeah, and that's freezing. And it's cold. Yeah. Like, I took mine from 50 to 47, and you can feel the difference. I bet. And I bet. it's like... <laughs> what else are you doing for fitness? Uh, just workouts, man. Staying healthy as much as I can. I don't do any crazy workouts. I don't lift crazy weights, but I lift weights every day. Are you going running. to gym or at home? I, I, I'm a part of Life Fitness when I start going back with my wife, uh, but I build a home gym. Nice. And nice. that's my little sanctuary, dude. I, the gym is getting a little wild for me. A little too distracting for me. Yeah, you got to go then, super early if you don't want to. Or it's just like there's some characters in there that I'm like, you have no business. What the fuck are you doing at the gym? Yeah. Naked. No, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't go to the gym. I go like I built a gym in my yeah. my wife don't even want me to go to the gym. You know, because no, I told my wife I was like, I go, I'm, I go, look, I'm not a pervert, but how do you not expect me to at least glance at? Yeah, because they're walking uh, around with no clothes on, and I'm like, that's ridiculous. That I shouldn't say that though, because huh? she hears this. She's no, but it's true. You. But it's it's true, no, and then true. and then and then all of a sudden you get caught looking over there, and then you're the pervert. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Like I'll literally be at the gym looking at the floor. And I told my wife, I was like, it's crazy in here. I think you got to go like a, uh, from Dominic six goes at four. He goes at four in the yeah. morning. He goes there because he's like, it's just a, a like a modeling show after like at six, seven, eight. Or he goes, all it is is just people trying to get someone and so show. How do you get ready to come to the gym? Like, how do you put full blown makeup and you match your socks? So you're like, did I have a one sock <laughs> and like a different sock? And like, I just want to work out and get out. Like, yeah. I'm not trying, like, this isn't like a, a, a talent show or like, yeah, yeah, you know, a fashion a show. Thing. You're like, I just, and that's why I love about my house. I literally open my garage, I put my speaker on and it's game time. Go, yeah. Yeah. And I'm done in an hour. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I'm a big fan of the Peloton. I think it's the easiest thing to do is just, I got a treadmill. So I'll t turn the treadmill on, put a class on. I don't even have to think about it. I'll do it's like, it's changing elevations for you and everything. So right? I'll do a boot camp. I like boot camp. So I'll do run and strength, run and strength. And at this point in my life, like I, I don't get paid to look good, right? So I don't need to have a six pack. I just want to be mobile and they functional. Yeah. Thanks. I just want to be mobile, functional. I want to look good in clothes and and make my wife happy and 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 still good discipline in my kids to to understand that that's part of the life. That's working out and doing these things. Those are part of your life. They have to be part of your life. You cannot not work out in your life. Totally. That, that's where I'm at now. I, it took me a long time. I. I started working out maybe this year, beginning of this year. As long as you do it. As long as you started doing it, that's a huge change. Yeah. That's what people don't understand. It's never too late to start. But like you're saying, my kids are seeing it now. Like even my 15-year-old daughter, she don't like PE or nothing. She's really, she's pretty, really smart, you know. But now she's like, I want to work out. You know, my daughters are like, I want to work out. Like they, I'll go to the mountains. Sometimes they'll come with me to the mountains. Yeah, dude, it's huge. They weren't doing that before. And I'm like, man, I'm like this little bit of time I put in. I've, I've done pretty good for myself, but I'm like, this. I see it like. This is so cool. Like, and imagine all, like, doing it is the, the experience and the hard part and all that stuff. But what do you get afterwards? Right? Endorphins. You look good. You feel good. You're happy. Dude, you're, you're, you're not sluggish. All like, of them are a positive. The brain's and, firing. Pow, pow. But think about it. If you, run into your, if you walk into your business like that every day, you, you cold plunge, you ran, you worked out with your kids, you're full of endorphins. You just show up to, the, you show up to your shop and you're like, good morning, good morning. People think you're on crack. Yeah. I show up at seven in the morning, like, hey, I'm dancing, I'm singing. 
everybody's like taking their sleepies out of their fucking eyes. Like a yeah. guy still got a pillow in the back of his head. I was like, dude, you don't even do your hair in the morning. Like, <laughs> what's wrong with you? Yeah. Just show up with wrinkled. Like my biggest pet peeve is wrinkled clothes, dude. Yeah. I'm like, you like, you not care about yourself? Like, do your shirt. Like, what happened to your shirt? You got a cow that's chewing on him. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. or there's stains on him. Yeah. Stuff. I'm like, dude, what the fuck? What, like, what the? Oh, oh I'm just. Well, I'm a body guy. I go. Yeah, but you still can be clean, and you still can be clean. Yeah. You still have to have all those, all that. Yeah, discipline. they think like the the, wor- the the workers that get dirty think like they don't have to wear cl- clean. Cl- they just wear the same dirty clothes. Like mm-hmm. it's like when I when I, when I was in a field, I had two sets of clothes. But you're still washing them. Yeah, no, I was clean every day, but I yeah. still had two sets of clothes. Like there was one work clothes because I knew maybe they're gonna get messed up, mm-hmm. and then there's the clean clothes, but like nice clothes. But no, I, are you kidding me? I'm clean every day, bro. Like, All the time. My I shoes. Had to be clean. Guys are like, how do you keep your shoes clean at the shop? I'm like, wipe them down. I clean them <laughs> before I leave. <laughs> I have a dry erase at a home that I clean them with before I go. I go, yeah. I, I I look at people's shoes, right? And like today, people like dirty shoes. I'm like, they I do. To me, you're a dirty person. They do <laughs> like dirty shoes. <laughs> it's just like, why do you have dirty shoes well, on? I grew, I grew up, so I was born in racer. I grew up, you, you clean your shoes every day. Wipe them down as they got scuffs, you know, the scuffs kind of stay because they're the only shoes you got, and you take care well, of them. Well, <laughs> even as they got older, though, but like the style today is the dirty shoes, like they're That's like crazy to hey. me. No, those aren't Zion, dirty. That's no, his are nice. What, what, are, what, what style are those? Those are Adidas, but they have like a fancy little drawing on them. Yeah, those are like the Run DMC. I used to love those. Yeah, those are those. That's what I'm a, saying. He oh, did you get little, those made like that? Oh, so they're thicker. So when you grind on the on the thing, they're samples. Oh, really? So there's only like five types. Nice. Well, he, kudos to you he's for in wearing a straight them. world. Um, good kid. So yeah, the fitness, I love it. So like you're working out, you're running. What are you running? Just run like run a block. Or something um, thing? I was running besides a five, the Peloton. I was running a five k a day, and then on I the got Peloton. Ru- you're no, f- no, outside. I can't run that long on the. I get bored on the Peloton. Oh, okay. I have to go outside and 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 explore and be outside. So five k, how how like how, how three miles, three, three point okay. three point one two miles, I think is a five k. Um, six laps around my neighborhood. So it's oh, it's I should easy try to do a five k, dude. I I we just did. I can do three miles. It's challenging enough. Right, and it's it's good because it gives you a good workout. It's about a thirty minute run, roughly. It's a ten minute ten mile. minute miles. Yeah, so dude, I just hit ten minute miles my first time today. I've been hitting seven and a half for a while. I was like getting down to like twenty four, twenty five minutes. I was flying, and I didn't realize that for a four year old, that's pretty good. No, it's really good. I'm telling you, I just hit ten minute mile a day. Like Dominic te- he texted me, ten minute mile because <laughs> I was doing like thirteen minute miles. You know, like I wouldn't quit on my yeah, yeah, yeah. coming up. But it's like, you know, like I said, he gets a free workout. A five K is, I think, it's perfect. It's the right amount of time. It's thirty minutes. You get so. A, what are you doing now? What you said you were doing the five K? Uh, well, right now I'm fasting, so I'm just doing. I'll do a three mile walk. Yeah, because in you, the morning yeah, you don't so have any. Nutrition I don't want to pass out in the yeah. middle of the day. I yeah. still got to be functional, right? So I'm just trying to be smart about it. But I am getting up. I do go for a walk. I go for a three mile walk again. Six stops around my your, neighborhood. Your freaking heart pumping. Your blood pumping. It takes pumping. an hour. Well, it's like level two, and it's your cur- cur- sweats going. All no sweat. It. It's still cool now. Okay, it's okay. nice and cool out. But you're just you know I'm probably pacing a sixteen and a half, seventeen minute mile walking. That's it. Yeah. Um, and it takes me about an hour to do the, the the three miles, but it's enough to get your 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 body away, get your blood flowing, and then I'll jump in a cold plunge after that. And then so my goal is when I'm done, hopefully Sunday, is go back to weight training, do some pretty good weight training. Um, I was reading some studies about muscle muscles. The that's your 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 uh, your sign of life. That's what's going to keep you alive for a long time. I have a friend that's a physical therapist and. Um, he specializes in, in elderly people, and the problem with them is that they don't move enough. Yeah, uh, he goes, they'll atrophy. come stay with us for three months, and we'll do physical therapy for three months, and then we're getting them to stand up, to sit down, lift weights and shit, and in three months they're good to go. But they go home, and guess what they have in front of the TV? A lazy boy. Mm-hmm. You want to know what they do in that lazy boy? Laying it all, all day. day. Yeah. They go, and some of these people get so lazy that they have a little basket next to their where they pee now. This. Oh so they're, shit! So they're not getting off. Excuse my language. So guess what happens? Three, four months down the road, they're back in physical therapy because they lost all their muscle again, and that's what's happening with older people today. Yeah, is that yeah, they can't yeah. move is because they don't exercise. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They're not picking themselves. up weights. They say that you're supposed to pick up. Se- you're supposed to suitcase carry seventy five percent of your weight for at least a minute. If you can do that, your muscles are going to be fine till you're hundred years old. Mm-hmm. But how many grandmas do you see at the gym? 
No, no, and that the muscles deteriorate, your body shuts, breaks down, and you don't you, have to do much. When, that's how you get a lot of injuries. Yeah, like like because the muscle around the tendon, or around the ligament, or whatever, it's not supporting it's it not anymore. Supporting it. Yep. Yeah, and and same thing with stretching. Like I I read uh, David Goggins books, and he talks about stretching and how stretching you know yeah. did so many things for him, and that that guy's on a whole another level. Yeah. He's yeah. nuts, but. I started picked up stretching, and now my wife's like, "How the fuck are you so flexible?" I go, "I stretch." I stretch a lot too now. I stretch, and it's it's great, and and it's it it's weird because before I'm like, ah, you know, oh, you stretch. Oh, that's <laughs> like, cool. Where are your spanks? And now it's like it's a it's a necessary evil, and it's really good for your body, for your movement, for your joints. For now, your, are you learning all this stuff just doing research, like on yep. YouTube and stuff like that? You're like, okay, this is, let me try this. This doesn't feel good. This feels mm -hmm. good. This, yeah. Okay. And okay. then slowly just implementing. Right. I read about um, Joe Rogan. He does a hundred uh, squats and a hundred pushups before he does any workout. So I've been doing that. That's his pre workout. Yeah. Dude, it kicks your ass. Are you taking pre workout no, or anything? I'm not taking so anything. So no. Uh, the any only kind thing of, that uh, I'm in and out is creatine. Okay. That's the only thing that I was taking very consistently. Yeah. I'm fasting, so I'm not taking it yeah. out, but I'll get back into it. Um, I've been reading more about it and. It, I, apparently everybody should be taking creatine. It's great for your body. It's great for recovery. Unless your kidneys are bad. I think yeah, there's I mean, a, I don't there's know a how study. Much. If your kidneys are bad, don't take it. Well, if you're an alcoholic, you shouldn't take a lot of things. <laughs> you but be taking the alcohol. <laughs> Do not put creatine <laughs> if in you're your vodka don't, tonic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you're an alcoholic, guys, don't take creatine. <laughs> But someone not, just sent me that. Uh, so, uh, like, because uh, I, I do creatine, protein, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing it all now, right? And uh, they sent me a thing about creatine. And I'm like, did you did you look at the rest of the TikTok? Like, it says if you have bad kidneys, don't take it. Yeah, I'm not an alcoholic or anything. I, I, if I have bad kidneys, this is like hereditary or something. Well, now it's like you know, my wife's got me into this. Is just read the label, what's in it, right? And then I I buy like. It actually looks like medicine. It comes in a little container and it's like pure curatin is like the purest curatin you can get. So I was like, I'll do that. Everything else really scares the crap out of me because the supplement world is not regulated. There's no nah. regulations in the supplement world. Uh, so yeah. you never know what you're really going to get. Uh, and with protein, same thing. They're full of crap. Yeah. So the best thing to do with protein to try to hit your intake is eat real food. Eat meat. Eat meat. Yeah. Eat, eat good meat, meat fish, good chicken. quality meat, yeah. fish, chicken, eat some veggies here and there. And but that's really what your body needs. That's what produces muscle. And if they're saying the muscle is the the key to living a long life, just do that, right? Mm -hmm. It's been proven mm -hmm. for a long time. People have been doing it forever. Yeah, yeah. People have been doing this for a really long time. I don't need to look like Arnold. I don't need to look like these guys that compete. I just want to look good with clothes on. My wife's happy and I can move around. Yeah. I want to get up in the morning. I want to go hiking with my kids. I want to play with them after work, have enough energy to do that and just stay out of the hospital. Hey, have you hiked Squaw Peak? I have. We used to do it every day. My Dude, wife and I before hard. kids. We started going up there. We did it four times. And it's steep. It's hard. It's steep. That's why it's hard because it's just like you get to a point where you're just like Stairmaster 3000. You're just like, oh. Yeah, yeah we went there. So uh, Dominic, because every Saturday or Sunday, we go hit a mountain. Uh-huh. And we stopped that because he freaking fell and oh, busted up his leg. So he's, he's just healed now. But So we went four times, right? And But... It was crazy when I was watching, like, I'm, you know, I'm struggling. I, I'm just getting into my fitness game, and I'm going up there, but then you see just people just quitting. Oh, yeah. At different levels, and mm -hmm. they're just quitting, and they're quitting it. And I, I made it up each time, right, faster and faster. But it's like, man, the mental game. It's crazy. That's a, uh, For whoever's watching, and you haven't uh, hiked Squaw Peak, go try Squaw Peak. I haven't tried a lot of them. I only tried, like, Thunder Mountain and Squaw Peak Mountain. Squaw Peak is hard. I'm putting my kids back in jujitsu. That's I, good. I pulled them out, I paused it for a little bit, and then I'm putting them back in because they're all girls and they need to learn how to fight. And my oldest goes, Jujitsu is hard, dad, especially because there's a lot of boys. It's like, it's hard. I go, you got to get good at doing hard things and mm -hmm. you got to be okay with doing hard things because doing hard things makes you really good at a lot of things. Yeah. I go, and mentally, you're going to be a lot tougher than most people when they look at shit and they go, oh, that's hard. You're like, I'll do it. I go, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? I go, you're going to fail and you're going to learn how to do it again more intelligently. Yeah. And so on and so forth. I homeschool my kids. Oh, that's cool. Well, my wife homeschooled so my is kids. So is it, uh, uh, is it you guys' curriculum? Or are you are you doing like curriculum from a, a different, like a like a uh, online school thing? or? What did you learn from high school? Oh, I didn't go to high school, bro. Okay. Eighth year, I went to one month of high school. I was kicked okay. out. So what, what, why, why are you so successful? It wasn't learn, anything. Then, I, it was what I learned from the fifth graders. Of the, uh, okay, no, I was seriously, a bad seriously, kid. bro. That's fine. No, we yeah. all we all did our. But but the schooling system. I would just tell you from my kids. Yeah, like they all passed me already. Um, you don't learn shit, bro. Like okay, wait, you, wait. You, you know what you learn? I was just, we we're just talking about this this morning when we we're working out. As you learn, 
to be part of a system, you you learn to wake up, go have breakfast, mm-hmm. go have lunch, obey, beep, obey, time obey, to go obey, home. Obey, 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 yeah. obey. That's what you learn at school. That's it. I didn't. Did you learn credit in school? No, you don't learn. Did nothing. you learn finances in school? Did well, you I didn't learn go that long enough. But you went. But but, but but do do no, people? Your, did nobody your, does. Did your kids learn financing? No. Do your kids learn what happens when they get in an accident? Nothing. What do they know about insurance? Getting a job? No, not even how to write a check, bro. Taxes. And I, there's I, no checks. I, real life shit. What did you learn in school? Nothing. I didn't, I, other than than knowing how to steal the hall passes so I can walk around school and how to ride a bus pass, a late bus pass on my own so I can be late. I, you learn complexities. You build some some type of friends there. That's it. Some social uh, interaction, and I, I, and most of the most of the teaching is like some of the, like you know the the math, the calculus, all that, a lot of it you don't ever use unless you're going to become like a scientist or something like that or right. engineer. Whatever. But even if even if you become that, you can always hire somebody to do it well, for you. Yeah, well, yeah. And then the, the history things they teach you is like, you know, it's changing rapidly. Like they're getting rid of history. You know, it's because it's 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 being uh, uh, filtered. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, what's going on here, guys? You know. So what it might take with homeschooling is 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 like I'm I was because re- school is book sit down read the book to the assignment. Yeah. Homeschooling is none of that. Yeah. Homeschooling is like my daughter's helping me make breakfast. My four year old daughter helps me make breakfast. She chops up the vegetables and she mixes the eggs and she puts. She's learning. Yeah, real life skills. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. They, my wife started a home bakery, and she sells nice. breads and cookies. I like it. I like breads and cookies. I'm not bro. putting it out there to like say that everybody should put an order in, but she does it because the kids learn how much the flour costs, how much the butter costs, how much the. But should everybody put an order in? Uh, yeah, do it. Yeah, I totally. my wife is gonna hate me for this, but <laughs> she's gonna have so many, so many uh, You're like a thousand orders tomorrow. So many so. sourdoughs to break. No, but uh, she cool. started making sourdoughs, and that's a process. And she taught the girls. She's oh, teaching the yeah. girls how, how being patient and how that's a process, and you got to be committed and disciplined to do it every bomb, day. Bro. And you got to feed it, and you got to feed it, and you got to do all that. You got to every how many hours you got to fold it and put it back and let it rest and feed it again. It's like a child. It's crazy. Yeah. And, and so she does all that and then she sells them and then the girls make money because of it. So they're learning how to make money. They're learning the process. They're learning the amount of work that it takes to make this very little money. And I'm yeah. like, well, all right, you sold the, the, the dough for 14 bucks. Well, it costs nine. That goes back to the house. So now you're left with this much. Yeah. yeah. And then they're like, I'm making a lot of money. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you are. But now they buy their own stuff. So they go to the store and I'm like, can, I, can you give me some, some gum? I'm like, well, you got, you know, $27 in your account. Your gum's five bucks. Oh, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah, because it's their money now. They're understanding. Dude, you're talking about a six and a four year old. manage their money. You're talking about a six and a four year old. That's amazing. That yeah. are like figuring out what they want to buy. And then, you know, we had a rough patch with, with, with work. And I was like, all right, we're not, the spending's no, we're, we're budgeting. So a lot of things went away. You want to know what my daughter did? Hmm. She brought me her piggy bank. She's like, I, I'm all in. She goes, Dad, here's my money. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing, dude. I was like, we're not broke. I was like, we're just, but the, the luxuries that, are gonna yeah. get on hold. And she goes, she, Yeah, but I haven't. She counted. She had like forty seven dollars. She's like, I got you. Yeah, I go, I go. Well, I'm forty. Dude, that's I, a big heart, it, dude. It's crazy, right? So they're learning all this from my wife. And I go, but then that's a good lesson because I go, that will buy, you know, the food we ordered yesterday. I go, we couldn't afford it with that. She goes, Really? All that stuff we bought, I go, you could have afforded about three things that are the seven things we bought. Mm -hmm. She goes, that's how much things cost? Yeah, and I go, how long have you been putting that in your piggy bank? Oh, it's been like six months. Think about it. Yeah. So making them aware of money, where it comes from, how it's earned, how it's spent, why should you spend it. Um, that's homeschooling, mm. right? We do, we we have our, our little, well, I'm going to start my garden again because the summer's here, kill your garden unless you have a greenhouse. But I'm showing them how to grow our own food and yeah. how to go water in how to what go do you, pick what it do you, what do you what do you what do you growing uh bell peppers uh serrano peppers um it's like three different peppers uh we did some strawberries tomatoes tomatoes they're great zucchini tomatoes always do good tomatoes are fucking great i yeah. had more tomatoes you know what else than does good? What melons uh i'm my watermelons died did they die yeah Okay. I don't know if I, I think I misplanted it. There's, there's like, there's like a, a science to what. Yeah, I grew up. My, so I was adopted. I was given like my I stepdad and we had like birds, a lot of birds, but he always had a gardens. Yeah. And so his tomatoes and melons always did good. 
Uh, limes and lemons are doing really, really good. Yeah. Those do as well. It's it, there, our heats are here. Their summers are brutal. brutal. It's it, it really burns everything. You got to shade it. You got to move it. You yeah. got to water it. It's, yeah. it's but I'm I'm teaching them how to do that. That's so nice. our next step is to, like we're talking. You move into one of the properties that has two acres, and I want to build a greenhouse where we can. So my goal is to build a house where the pantry door goes into the greenhouse mm, all you, your herbs and you everything. can go in there and pick and pick did, any cook it people don't understand how much you can build off of like how much food you can get out of your house at a very small space you can get a lot of food a couple of my neighbors grow so sometimes we trade so mm. i have an excess of of whatever i have i'll go drop it off at his house and then whenever he has an excess he'll come drop it off at my house get someone with a couple hands get some eggs so i one of the things i really i, I i've been Thinking about and drawing is, is starting a, uh, like a um, a modern a modern homestead, All right? So a homestead usually you grow your own food, you you have your own meat, you raise your own animals, blah blah blah. Think about having think about fifteen properties, big enough properties where they each have their own garden, and then you have a, a farm in the middle of the of the community. Yeah. So instead of paying into an HOA, now you're paying the farmer to to farm your own stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how much meat do you really need for ten houses? You don't really need a lot of meat. How many houses? How many how many cattle can you sustain? So every house pays every month towards the farm. Not only does the farmer help you grow your own stuff if you're looking to grow different stuff within your house, but you have a little farm within your community that you can go pick up fuck anything that grows seasonally yeah yeah and yeah. have your own cattle and have your own chickens dude you have 20 chickens you're gonna have 200 eggs a day close it's a lot and that's not close. a lot of chickens do yeah. you imagine if you have 40 chickens you can give eggs to everybody every day and now you're you're you got your own raised eggs right there what happens if a pandemic happens again yeah yeah what was the biggest thing with the pandemic i went to the grocery store and people were fucking weird they're loading up on stuff that toilet paper. Like I'm like, dude, what are you doing, dude? I remember, I remember. So we we're in Hawaii, okay, during the pandemic. When they shut, they shut Arizona down. We were in Hawaii when, like, all that stuff started going crazy. And so we're in Hawaii. We're at a conference, and and we didn't even know what was happening in Arizona. We knew the like it was the COVID was happening. Yeah. Like it was like really starting to get. And uh, my wife's cousin calls and says, "All the stores are empty." And we're like, "What?" Yeah. So we're in this conference for three days, and we're like, "What?" And then we start getting like, uh, like instant notifications from yeah. the airlines, from every, and we're like, "What the? F what is What's going, going on? on?" Yeah. And then so our friends like left immediately. They got afraid. They like f tried to find. So then when it like our our flight, I think it was maybe the next day, and we got delayed, delayed. We didn't even think we we're gonna leave Hawaii. But then I come back and I go in the stores. And they're empty. I'm like, what the it's hell? Really weird. It was a really weird experience. Just overall, everybody gets so afraid, and they they, uh, they panic buy. They, I I wonder, I, like that number from forty percent of wasted food probably went up. Oh, and during Be COVID, yeah, because everybody bought so much stuff. Yeah. If you could afford it, they but bought yeah. so much stuff. Yeah. yeah, remember the the banks? You couldn't get money at the ATMs mm -hmm. and stuff. Like, Gas, nothing. It's, it's crazy. Insane. But think about it, right? You have your own little home set. If you have the necessities there. Yeah. What do you have to worry about? Yeah, totally. You got a farmer that's you pay him well to farm everything, and and I think there's enough money on it. That, I mean, fuck, there's eight trays that charge over a thousand bucks a month. Yeah. Imagine you do that, and all of a sudden you have a little bit of a communal store that you can go in there and pick whatever you need daily. Yeah. Yeah. Fresh pick daily stuff, right? And then you do it per season, right? We've gotten so entitled that we're growing shit that shouldn't grow in the summer in the summer, and then we have. Now you have strawberries year round. Now you have avocado year round. That shouldn't happen. Yeah, and it takes the it takes the uh, the importance and 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 how how awesome these things are, like when they were seasonal. Remember, you go to a restaurant and all of a sudden they're like, whatever you order in the summer it's is not available. Season. It's yeah, seasonal season. there because yeah. they're they're respecting the seasons how things grow. Mm -hmm. But we're we're moving so much stuff around to have it year round. To There's have so much chemicals involved. But but even the water, right? Like California is. Pulling water for places that have They're pulling water, water, water from Arizona to bro. places that shouldn't have water. Yeah. Like, why don't you just grow the place where it's supposed to grow and then just respect it? And if it runs out that season, then do it again next season. Yeah. And, and yeah. it's a really good way to conserve. But if you have this little homestead, like you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Imagine if every neighborhood had a little farm in it. Now you're not worrying about where the food gets picked and how it gets processed. Dude, that's and, how it was like a hundred years ago. Yeah. 
Yeah, you know I mean, we just we we've gotten away from all that now because it, it's there's no money in that. It, now it's just like, uh, you know, like um, kids what, don't even what, know where the it, food comes it, from. Of course, was it New York that they call the concrete jungle? Mm -hmm. Right, that's becoming everywhere where it's just more concrete, more asphalt, more concrete, more asphalt. But like, pump, you, did you know palm trees aren't even from Arizona? No. They're not from Arizona. I don't think, are they they got transplanted from, here. Yeah, I think they're from a whole other country. They're, but but like people start these communities and plant palm trees. They don't. They do absolutely nothing for you. And there's studies done that where where cities that have trees, they're like significantly cooler. Yeah. Even neighborhoods over here. Go to Arcadia, bro. It, there's cooler. big old trees and significant cooler. Yeah. It, it makes a huge difference. I mean, imagine building communities like that moving forward. Yeah. Where where people can have access to that stuff. Dude, that can change. A lot of things but mm -hmm. unfortunately that's not the way things work right yeah, now yeah but that'd be really cool to do this is a good conversation yeah I'm glad you got to have likewise it. same you know um i'm glad you're doing good bro thank you i appreciate it I think, thanks for having you know, me do you go to church i don't yeah i okay. don't okay i stopped a while a long time ago it's, yeah. it's very difficult for me um mainly because i i came from a predominantly catholic uh city or town yeah yeah and then I got stuck in an ESL class. You want to know who is in, ES, in an ESL class? Everybody. It's a melting pot. It's guys from China, Russia, Mexicans, yeah. Dominicans. And then you become really good friends with these people, and they're really good people. And then what you end up realizing is they're all from different religions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I started questioning a lot of times. I never got answers to. And I, I, I'm a firm believer in energy and, and karma. I think if you do good, good comes back to you. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I'm smart enough to understand what's good and what's bad and, and try to do what's bad 100% yeah, yeah, of the times and yeah. stay away. I mean, try to do what's good 100% of the times and stay away from the bad. Yeah. If I treat you well, I don't care if you kneel and pray, if you stand up and pray, if you go to a church and pray, if you pray at home, if you're a good person, you're good with me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter. Not, and I'm never going to judge anybody based on politics, religion. That's your own opinion. Yeah. You're entitled to that and yeah. you should have that and no. you should be able to talk about it without being criticized and and beat over the head yeah. over because of it because that's not who you are yeah that's a part of who you are but that's not the whole entire person mm -hmm. and a lot of people need religion because it gives you a really good path it's a structure it's a structure i i just i don't feel like i need the structure because I, I i i know what good or bad is and you continue to try to do good for other people and make people feel good and then mm -hmm. what what do you get in return yeah yeah you get but those good. are all biblical principles i know yeah. So, right? Well, and I asked that because you, you we talked about fasting and stuff totally. like that. That's a biblical thing. Karma is is, is sowing seeds. Mm -hmm. You know, you're talking about farming, sowing seeds. Totally. Because that's a I'm a Christian, um, but it's more like relationship with God because religion will set you apart real quick. Mm -hmm. Religion will judge you, will condemn you, will you know all these nasty things. Religion will they'll kill you. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's wars on religion. Well, there's some really nasty stuff in the Bible that people forget and, that and exists. And all of them, too. And all the different mm -hmm. Bibles, right? And so th that's religion. Mm -hmm. Because religion, you know, religion now becomes the the, the, the political view. You know I never I mean? want, I just never wanted it to get that, um, that way, right? But and, the relationship with God is, and that's why I was saying that, is because, like, you're, we're talking about farming. I talk a lot about sowing seeds, uh -huh. giving, you know. Um, so that's, I talk a lot about that, but... Um, I didn't think you went to church, but I, I, I'm glad that you think the way you think. Well, look, praying is manifesting. It's 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 speaking out into the existence. It's speaking out to either whatever you believe in, whether it's an energy, whether it's a and person, a god, or whatever. Everything we say is actually a prayer. Well, it's a vibra It's so I learned this through learning about energy and healing and healing your energy and your aura and your chakras and all that stuff. Is thoughts are energy. Mm -hmm. So po a positive thinker tends to land on positive things. A negative thinker tends to land on negative things. And if you think negative enough, it, you become negative. You manifest Your it. body becomes a negative all energy. I mean, think about all the, 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 the different um, tests they've done where with placebos and different things, like people that got sick but weren't ever sick mm -hmm. and they got healed and they, they weren't even taking any pills. It mm -hmm. was water pills or or the, the person that freezes and it wasn't even cold mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, so it is. We there. This whole world is full of energy. I, I was telling someone. I go. Uh, I go, and I'm around a lot of Christians, right? But I, I'm just different. Like I go yeah. different. I'm everything. And I was like, think about like one 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 thing is the Bible says that everything you say is a prayer, so it's going out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I tell people like, if this damn thing right here, this phone, can go out to the middle of wherever. Mm -hmm. So from this. Thoughts. 
So can your You're thoughts and your words. So can your thoughts and your words. Did you know that if we develop our brain enough, we can talk to each other without talking to each other? All of it, dude. Through like telepathically? All of it. Because it's all vibrations. Everything's yeah, vibrations. Yeah, That's yeah. why you can fix people with vibrations a lot of times, right? Yeah. It's 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 pretty nuts. But, you know, I, I, I kind of shied away with it. I had a lot of questions about religion in itself. And there's so much negative and, and, and bad that comes from religion sometimes. I'm like, I just don't. I'm not okay with that. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'd rather just... I, I, I make mistakes and, and the goal is to learn from them and get mm -hmm. better and mm -hmm. learn to apologize, learn to, to forgive, right? Yeah. Learn not to carry negative shit with you. Like being, me being mad at somebody, what I've learned is it only affects you. It totally. I'll tell you a story from earlier to just today. Okay, we got to two lunches, right? Uh huh. And I, and I felt this is your. So we get two lunches. I had set up one guy. He's like, Chris, I want to bring lunch on Thursday. I'm going to bring Panera. Cool. Bring it, right? So I, I pull up, we're going, I went to my other building. We're doing a, a, two restrooms here and one restroom mm -hmm. at the other building. And I pull up and he's, I was like, Hey, what's up? He goes, uh, he was really hurt. He goes, nothing other than, uh, you have double the food now. <laughs> and I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> he was really hurt. His were hurt. And, and uh, he's a friend of mine. Uh, he's our a sales vendor too. Yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, there's someone else that brought food. And I'm like, dude, I, I have no, I don't even know what you're talking about. I just got here. Like. And he's like, yeah, it's this company. I'm like, that's weird. You know, so then I felt bad for him because he like he literally felt bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if I lie, I don't even know. And I'm like, dude, I'm so sorry. Like I felt so bad for him. I came inside and made everyone else feel bad, especially the dude that brought the other food. I felt bad, so bad for one person. I made someone else mm -hmm. feel bad. And I was like, what the hell? Did I? And I do this a lot, to tell you the truth. Like this, I just caught this today. And I'm like, what the hell did I just do? Like, I felt so bad for with this one guy. I literally made this guy feel like shit. And he did a good deed. Yeah. And I had to freaking like call him and Paul. I'm like, what did I? I'm so sorry. But the dude. fact that you recognize it is that that's that's. I would have never recognized it before, dude. What made you recognize it? I have no idea. Like, because I'm, I'm like, like, I grew up bad. I don't have family and stuff, mm -hmm. dude. Like, so like, I don't think about certain things like to hurt people. And I just like, what the hell did I just Tell do? My approach can be direct yeah and and but i was like man i like without any intention behind it yeah without yeah not, a not maliciously yeah, i'm yeah, never yeah. malicious but yeah. it's just like i'll say something that's just not right um and but i just felt it and i'm like man you know that's so good I, that you I felt apologize that. to him and i'm like how much like i do this all the time that's and good I, that you yeah. felt that and you got you recognized it and you you made it right yeah because now I, I i'm gonna look for it you know what I mean? Because I really do. I probably do it all the time. That's what really what it's all about. It's it's it's. And look, by all means, I'm not perfect. I I, I try to be as much as I, I can. I thought you were, bro. And your wife's <laughs> cookies. I think your wife's cookies are probably perfect. Yeah, I'm gonna bring you some cookies, dude. There's her sourdough bread, bro. She makes this like, like cinnamon. She makes this like cinnamon honey uh, bread, and you can make uh, um, toast in the morning with oh, it. Oh, nice, nice. Do you guys, do you like sourdough, like uh, clam chowder sourdough? Do you ever do that? I can't. I can only eat clam chowder anywhere where there's water, dude. You go out to like uh, Massachusetts. Oh, or, okay, okay. You want the real stuff? Okay. Yeah, you can't just. You know what I'm you're saying? We're gonna, in the desert. You're not We're eating not that supposed Disneyland, to be bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go get they it have at, it at, the, at the fair. <laughs> they have it at Disneyland, dude. They got deep fried <laughs> clam chowder at the chair at the fair. Do they? <laughs> no. Probably though. Huh? <laughs> the fair's out, dude. I didn't even know it's out now. It just can I tell you how disappointed I was last year with it? With the fair? Yeah. Go ahead. How expensive it is? Oh, it's crazy. And it's the same thing as it was 20 years ago, 30 years no. ago. No. Well, the fare is the same. Yeah. The prices are $10 to get on a ride, like, for two minutes. Yeah. I'm that, like, less yeah, than that. This is, we went for two hours, spent like 600 bucks, and I was like, okay. That's insane. I go, that I'm, I'm, I'm out. Yeah. I'm topped out. I'm done. This is too much. It's, that's not fun. No. Especially uh -huh. in today's day and age. It's not. Yeah. Who's taking their five kids to the fair? It's expensive. It's you know what we used to do when we were younger. So when we when we started the company, we we struggled probably the first few years, whatever, right? And we would so the fair would have a day. So we found the, like the deals and all that stuff. The Wednesdays. So like, so they would have one where you did a, a, the kids did book report. And they got like say like five ride passes. Then they had the uh, so that would be one thing we did. We knew that you could do that all the time, yeah. right? So then we got the kids. So we got four kids. And then so okay, you got the you guys got the these passes. Then we'd go on the day where it was 
like uh, half price mm-hmm. rides or mm-hmm. whatever the hell, like a Wednesday yeah, or something yeah, like, like that. Wednesdays, yeah. So we would go like say a Wednesday, do the 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 book report, and it was like one more thing. We so did, you would go like we did like three things, yeah. and then because we were it, we didn't have a lot of money, yeah. or or or, we went, or if we did, or we went on the food day where it was like two dollars or something. Everything was cheaper, yeah. And you just went, and we're like, here's here's fifteen twenty bucks, guys, to eat. Just and then we just go two dollars, two dollars, two dollars, two dollars, two dollars. Um, but kept it. I've always liked the fair. I I liked it when I was like. 15 and we i used would to go, go there all the time i would go when i was a kid and mess around we used to go there all the time and we could afford it yeah that's kids we yeah. could parent get 20 bucks 40 you, yeah, bucks you go in there and have a good time you eat you get a couple of rides you have fun you walk around i'm telling you i went i was like i don't remember spending 600 dollars at the fair yeah i go that was a little to me because I, I i mean i'm talking about a six and a four year old that are getting rights yeah and i have to get in with them every single time so now you're talking about Fifteen twenty dollars to get on a ride for two seconds. I just thought it was a little much. That is a lot. Did you go to uh, like Knott's Berry Farms for like sixty bucks a kid or something? But that's what I'm saying. It's, and somebody was just I was just watching the TikTok on it, and they're like, "We got hosts at the fair. Even the food, dude, it's it's ridiculous. It's expensive. expensive and it's terrible. Boy, it's it's a convenience, right? But it's still, yeah. I feel like it's they're taking advantage of people for yeah. for what it is. Yeah, to yeah. be completely yeah. honest with you, but yeah. we'll probably end up going anyways. Yeah, no, I'm not gonna go. We'll drive by it, and the kids will be like, "Oh my god, the fair!" Yeah. yeah. Or if we go, I, I'm, I'm like that stuff. I'm on the cheap. I'm on the cheap. On I'm that. a cheap person. I'm, I'm not a- gonna lie to you. I, I, when it comes to spending money, I don't like to spend too much. But I don't money. like to waste money. Like I'm one of those guys. Like, like I'll buy the kids. Like I don't like Starbucks just because of their price. Mm-hmm. Not anything else. N- nothing else. I don't like them because of their price. So I'm one of those guys that like will buy his. I'll buy my my daughter Starbucks, my wife Starbucks, and I won't get one. You won't get one for you. Yeah, because I'm trying to save money. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's I, so dumb. I I I I got a routine with Starbucks. I go get a, a an americano every morning. And yeah, those are good. Yeah, well, it's I don't I don't straight coffee. It's straight coffee, yeah. straight black coffee. That's yeah. all I that's all I intake. Same thing with the boost. No more boost. Just stop. I, I haven't drank coffee for like six months. I stopped. Really? Somebody, yeah, I changed over to all water. And so, like, I was drinking the uh, soda water. Yeah, yeah. Not, not soda. I stopped drinking soda years ago. But uh, coffee every day. Mm-hmm. Then I was, so I was going, uh, so sweet cream. Then I went to black. I was doing, like, the butter and the MCT, all that stuff. And it just got to where coffee didn't taste the same no more. And I just stopped drinking it. I drink one a day. So I just, I just drink uh, water. One coffee a day. That's it. In the morning. It's just, it's more of a routine than a need. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll go, like, two weeks without it. And then I'm like, oh, I should get a coffee. And then I get back into it. I have these little packets, like little vitamin packets, you know, you pour them in the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have some good ones. So I, I, I put those like a hydration vitamin. Water, one. as long as I got a lime in it, I'm good. Yeah. That's something that I keep in my backpack all the time. I got a flask full with water. That's always, and right now I'm carrying bone broth and water. Nice. So I got a little box of Liquid. bone broth and, yeah. and that's all I'm taking for the next seven days. Liquid fast. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change the way I eat once I'm done with the fast. I'm going to start eating more uh, heavy proteins, natural heavy proteins. And um, a couple of veggies and fruit. And I that's love about it. it. I love it. Eggs and eggs and meat is the, the carnivore diet. I've been reading about it, and I've seen a lot of guys get just like their physique and their mental like clarity gets goes through the roof because then you're not eating any inflammatories anymore. It's natural protein, like you said. So that's that's my next goal, and hopefully with the discipline that I'll I'll, I'll instill myself in the next seven days of not eating and fasting and doing all that stuff, and I think I'll be able to pick it up a lot. It's you get some clarity when you fast. It's so weird. Like your yeah. brain starts thinking about stuff that you normally don't think that's about. That's why that's why was the spiritual side of it. Like we'll do spiritual fast. It's for brain brain, brain clarity. It's that's the, really it. The cold plunge, know. I think, is the same thing, right? It's it, the workout is the same thing. It's something like I don't like working out. Like I think it's dumb that I'm in the garage that picking stuff up and <laughs> you're well, I'm suffering. picking stuff. I'm like by myself at four in the morning and the, yeah. everybody's sleeping, right? Like I'll peek in the room and there is a <sighs> I'm over here yeah, just, uh, <gasps> yeah. picking stuff up, putting it down, and but ultimately, like you know what the, the reward's reward. going to be. Yeah, it's yeah. about the the mental clarity, and then you feel really good, right? You After feel you good, work dude. Out, I'm you telling just you, like, like, I was getting, I was getting so sluggish. Like, I'm gonna show you a picture. Like, I would like it would be like 11, 12 o'clock. I'm like falling asleep. Oh, in the morning? Yeah, yeah. I work here. I was two sixty, dude. Uh, huh? I was two sixty. So yeah, so and uh. I'll show you like a, but you're right. You 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 show up to work and you're still tired. Did all of it, dude. I was just like, what the hell is going on here? But you know what I've noticed that when you do all those tough things, the cold plunge and the working out and all that stuff, the reading and 
like you do all those things and then all of a sudden you you can handle so much more shit right okay uh, so i've lost like 30 pounds scroll like the first five pictures damn dude and i wasn't even the heaviest right there that's when i started You're to look pictures younger. I lost like 30, over 30 pounds. Yeah, good for you, dude. You can see my back. If you see the back one, it's like, holy shit, there's like 32 rolls. And I still have a little roll. Dude. But I'm working on it. That long high can get rid of. I, I, just I started can't. doing abs. I started doing a lot of abs, um, uh, uh, planks, kind of building up the core. Dude, but that's good it's not for bad. you, man. Not no, bad. you look great, dude. I was 260, so I started a business, and I was, a, I was in a door-to-door -door business, and that's probably the best. I don't know if you got, I think we've been going mm. for a while. We're fine, bro. I, I had uh, I joined a door-to-door -door business, and it's probably one of the best jobs, shittiest places that I've had. And why great? Because you learn how to be tough. You learn how to take no and go. You learn how to not take things personal. You learn that you can literally do anything if you put your mind, energy, and time to it. Yeah. And you go apply yourself. And it became very successful. But with that, I, I jeopardized my physical and mental health because I was eating like shit right i was yeah because you're always out you're stopping at the gas station you grab the, two taquitos and a monster and the cheapest stuff and it's just fast yeah. it's just fast nasty it's, shit yeah. and then at the end of the day you're with 50 other sales reps and what do you want to do after work you want to go grab a beer pound some chicken wings it's still fast yeah, it, yeah, it's just, still, just, yeah. and then one day you know we i had moved to kentucky i i started i started in arizona i moved to florida we built um orlando miami what kind of uh, industry what industry was that? it's just uh it's, so it's door-to-door -door sales so it's customer acquisitions and the cus the client that we had at the time was an auto glass company and the guys that own the, the auto glass company are now my partners my business partners oh yeah so i went from being a door-to-door -door sales rep for the company selling glass selling uh, selling appointments okay right yeah. so there's nine states in the country where you can get your winter replaced on no cost through your insurance company so instead of putting ads on the paper and online and having people call you just go to your house. Hey, how's it going? My name's Oscar. I'm uh, going to be doing some work in the area. I just wanted to stop and introduce myself. Uh, I'm going to be working with John, uh, replacing his windshield on the F-150. Um, so we're just saying hi to the neighbors, see if we can help anybody outside. Oh, yeah, I got a chip. Is that your car man. outside? Yeah. Yeah, let me show you what we're talking about. It's... Oh, shit. You got a say, do you got a state farm like John does? Great. Let's get him on the phone. As long as they approve it and they say it's not going to be co any cost to you, we'll throw you on the schedule. Yeah, yeah. And you get you would get paid $50 a, a lead. Nice. So I got to a point where we had three, four hundred people going door to door. Mm. And then uh, when it was all said and done, I think we were doing close to 3,000 windshields a week. <laughs> and then we took it into, I personally took it into nine states. I went from Florida to Connecticut. Uh, no, Florida, Kentucky, South Carolina, and then I ended up in Connecticut. So you were building it up and training everybody. And it's a multi-level marketing and yeah. you get a chance yeah, to move up. up. And yeah. I was like, you know what, I can build this. And I did and I grew it and I built it. And then um, once you get to a certain level, politics start kicking in. And I was hitting my numbers to level up. And what I learned is that once you level up, all those people above you lose their commission on you. So guess what they're trying to do the whole time? They keep you down? Yep. So I got to a point, I, met, I had met my wife at that time. Um, and I was dating her for six months and I like, really liked her. And then I was like, you know what? This is just taking a toll. But I had, it, the, the point of the story was that I gained 260 pounds. I was 260 pounds because that's all I was doing. I was just working, just, running, just running back drinking, and forth, yeah. uh, stressing, drinking, going out. And then one day I was looking at myself in the mirror and I was like, that's not who you are. I was like, that's not you. That's not who I want to be. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, and ultimately the way I see it is like everybody's body is just their vehicle through life. Right. That's, mm -hmm. This is just our, our segue of how we're getting through life we're somebody different inside right we 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 who we who, the way you look and see my body that's not who i am yeah 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 well, you got to get to know somebody to to really get to know who they really are totally and and when i looked at myself i was like doesn't re doesn't reflect that's not you that doesn't yeah. reflect who i am yeah so then I, I i go what do i need to do to fix it and i made some changes cold turkey and i go okay i'm not doing this i'm gonna doing that i'm gonna doing this and i'm gonna start working out i joined crossfit at the time and lost 60 pounds in like six months nice and i haven't looked back since that's amazing. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. So it's been good, man. Real good. Um, where can like the audience? Where can they find you? What What are you on Instagram? What uh, else? OG on IG is my handle for Instagram. Uh, it's Scottsdale underscore CC is uh, the shop. Yeah. Um, look me up. If you follow. guys got any, you guys getting a wreck? 
Need a check. No, uh, no and, and look, another thing we've done, and I'm glad you mentioned that. Are you that, pairing up with lawyers? I'm not pairing up with lawyers, but I vetted out some really good ones that, nice. that, that kind of... You can help them. That, that, that I know they take care of the customer, and I send them that way. Uh, I, I I won't mention any names. I don't get paid enough to do some advertising. We'll, but we'll I, got work some, on that. I got some really good ones that, that I, I personally vetted out, and I, I send business to, and they send me business, and we have a really good working relationship not partnering up with any of them. Yeah, though. yeah. Uh, but I, I have enough because I, if I give you a referral, I want to make sure that you're going to fulfill that referral like I do. Totally, totally. So if I send you to an attorney that's not excited to work with you and just cares about how much he's going to make off of you, I don't, I don't, I'd rather not send you to an attorney. Yeah, yeah. But if somebody gets in an accident and they are looking for an attorney, call us and we'll, we'll, we'll take care of it. But yeah. So and you guys are in Phoenix and Tempe, uh, Phoenix, and Scottsdale. Tempe and Scottsdale. Scottsdale is off of um, Evans and Scottsdale Road, so North of Cactus and Scottsdale Road. We have uh, Tempe is uh, Weber and Miller, so it's Scottsdale Road and McDowell. And then I have seventh, uh, 19th Street and University is our newest, our newest location. 19th Street and University. Yeah. All right. We work yeah. with all the insurance companies. We work in all makes and models. Dude, we just sent my van like right across the street. I do all of Andy's vans. So when his vet, when he, even when he buys new vans, he sends it to me. I wrap them. I, I do everything. Oh, you just take care of all that stuff? Yep. Yeah, we're working on trying to do some of the, the outfitting for Dude, them. Dude, I so. wish I would have met you like, uh, well, it's been there for, I feel like, a month. But because it has an old wrap and I wanted to get it redone. Yeah. And they're like, no. So they, they had to replace the back doors or fix them and the bumper and then whatever else. But now I got to get it because the wrap's missing from yeah. the whole back. And I want to take it off and change it or do something. Anything you need, let me know. That should be on the claim, huh? If the wrap was on the back? Yes. Um, I don't know exactly how your uh, commercial policy is, is worded. It's but similar. A lot, of, a lot of time that's that's uh, the wrap is part of the, the business. Yeah. So it, they protect it. Your personal vehicle, anything that's aftermarket, you have you have to call your insurance and add a rider to it, so they oh, okay. protect all no, your aftermarket stuff. I think it, I think it stuff. should uh, protect it, but I think they don't want to do it, so I think that's the problem. They don't want to do no, yeah. So I'm gonna pay them before my claim's not done yet. I'm got just it. gonna pay like they're done. I gotta go get my van today. Pay it and invoice the insurance company. That's what I'm gonna do. And then yeah. and I'm gonna tell them to fix my wrap. They should re they should refund you the yeah. wrap. Yeah. The, yeah, the wrap that got damaged it gets yeah. covered every time. Yeah. The only time we don't see it covered is if it's your personal vehicle. Like we have a... Makes sense. We had a car that, uh, a Porsche that had full stealth PPF. Pay protection film over the whole car. Lady Rex, the whole front end needs to be replaced. It's like 2800 bucks. Insurance company goes, we'll only cover, you know, a thousand bucks. Your policy only covers a thousand bucks for aftermarket stuff. Yeah. So she goes, what the fuck? I go, well, one, I go, we ended up covering it for her. So we cover the rest to complete the whole entire job and to keep the customer. But I go, you need to call your insurance and, and add a writer because if anything happens to your whole entire wrap, it's going to be $6,000 to replace the whole thing and they're not going to replace yeah, it. Yeah, and maybe it's another six bucks a month or something. It's, dude, it, rental cars, um, anything additional, even like adding more coverage is not really that expensive. That's what I mean. It's not usually, they're usually not that, even, even to go from like, one thing we learned and we'll, we'll end this, but like with the insurances and stuff. So we have high premiums. Mm -hmm. or, um, and, and so like I, when we started making a little money is we changed, you know, what's the, the basic deductible? Like, uh, I don't even know what it is anymore. 70, 30 or what, what is it? What are those numbers? Like uh, 50,000, 50, 15,000 was the minimum. Yeah, whatever. And so we started changing to like, Three hundred thousand totally. and five hundred thousand, and um, but it, 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 like as we started changing up, it wasn't a big increase. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, but it it's, protects you. Yeah, listen, if the liability, bro. We we are conditioned to go after the cheapest insurance. The uh, cheapest anything. We are conditioned because the ads say this is what you need. Well, the ads say we'll save you. 15% or more on car insurance. We'll yeah, save yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. What they don't tell you is like, they'll go, okay, well, in order to save you 50%, I'm going to take the glass coverage off. I'm going to take the uh, rental coverage off. I'm going to take this off. I'm, and then before you know it, you have bare bones. Yeah. I have a Porsche that I own now that a lady wrecked and her insurance company, they, they're like, we're not covering any of that. It's not in your policy. And she was under the impression that it was because she just called and said, I need insurance. I got a Porsche and they send her liability and she didn't even have comp collision. So she bought it cash and got liability. No, she was still paying for it. So I don't even know how she was still. Long story short, she cheaped out on the insurance because she wanted to 
to be able to afford the Porsche. <laughs> the Porsche. She out on the insurance, got in a wreck, and then now she had to abandon the car because she couldn't pay it. Did you fix it yet? No, it's all my lot. I, I, let's I fix uh, it, bro. Is that a good one? I submitted. Yeah, I yeah, submitted. Well, let's fix it. I submitted for a abandoned title because they abandoned yeah. the car. Yeah. But you'll be surprised how many people think they're they're saving money by getting the cheapest insurance. Yeah. And then they get in a wreck, and all of a sudden they're like, "Well, you have a two thousand dollar deductible, and then you don't have rental car coverage, you don't have this coverage, you don't have that coverage." Now they're gonna go after your stuff because you wrecked somebody else's car and you're out of limits on your coverage. Yeah. Like if you're gonna do anything out, like please don't cheap out on your insurance. Even though we're not the biggest fans of the insurance companies, spend the extra 30, 40, 50 dollars a month to get the right insurance. Even if you ride a hoopty, get full coverage on that thing. Cause even just getting in a wreck and getting that car replaced. That's everything for people. There's people that have one car. Well, in li a liability, you don't get your car replaced. No, you don't get it. You, you don't, don't even get it. You only fix the other car. After whatever the minimum is. Yeah, it fixes the other car. And now you're stuck with no car. Do you know how much a headlight for a new car is today? It's a lot, dude. Like if you had a Mercedes, a BMW, anything that has adaptive headlights, you oh, know like how much a headlight 1500 is? 1500 bucks? No. More? That's a Honda. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're talking about $5,000 for a Range Rover oh, wow. headlight. You're talking about seven, eight thousand $8,000 for a high-end car yeah. for a headlight, bro. Like we 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 just fixed a 2014 750i. Oh, you know those BMWs were really nice back yeah, in the, the day. Big ones, yeah. It's a forty five hundred dollar headlight, and that thing's old. And it still needs to get programmed. It still needs to get like diagnosed and all the stuff. Like it, you're talking about fifty six hundred bucks. So you you bump in a in a parking lot, you just scrape somebody's headlight that needs to be replaced. You're six thousand dollars into it, bro. We 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 uh, my wife we just sold it. We she had a Land Rover Defender. Uh huh. And they, so our neighbors hit her. Well, they didn't hit her here, but the company hit yeah. her. And it took like six months to get it fixed. So uh, Range Rover, Land Rovers? They're the worst, bro. Uh, they don't keep a lot of things in stock, and they got to they gotta send them over the pond. And so it's, that and takes it's, a, and it's a lot time. of it's aluminum. Try, doing it, carriage. try fixing one of those during the pandemic. It's, I had one for a year and three months in my shop waiting for parts. Dude, we waited like six months. As soon as we got it fixed, we sold it. Then. We just sold it. We So we, I've, and, and it's funny because I learned something new when that happened. We learned about um, something called a constructive total loss. So if your car. We tried that. It, it, and so so then if that doesn't work, then you go, okay, great. That's fine. So if you're not, if you're not going to total this car that I'm paying for, that I'm not using, then I'm going to hit you for diminished value. And loss of use. That's what. So that's yeah. a lot. A lot. That's something that doesn't get talked about. Yeah. That's something that doesn't get talked about a lot. Is that if you get hit by somebody, you can go after the insurance company for loss of use and diminished value. Loss of use is how long you did not use your car because you're paying for whatever car you drive. So I drive, you know, my my daily is an Infinity QX80, right? So I drive that, and if I get in a wreck, they're gonna give me a Wrap Four. It's not the same car. Yeah. So I'm paying fifteen hundred dollars a month for this. This is a three hundred dollar a month car. Yeah, I need to get paid for the difference, and they'll pay you for the difference. Mm. The loss of use, yeah, it's one of them, and the diminished value is another one. You can try to do it by yourself. There's a lot of attorneys out there right now that they handle those claims, and I would highly yeah, I recommend. Wish it, I wish I would, like I said, I wish I would mentioned before. It was pain, the pain in the butt. How long ago was this? We literally just got it back like three weeks ago, and we sold you it. Might we, still we be, no, we sold it. You might still be able to do that. Oh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know if you don't own the car, but but you still lost money because the car has a Carfax and has diminished value. So I'm gonna buy a, uh, the new Lexus, the GX 550. Oh, so beautiful. Uh, we're in line, so you gotta wait in line. But we, we as soon as we got it back, we're like, no way. I like those, and I like the Mercedes SUVs. And I'm only getting the Lexus because Toyota. Mm -hmm. Great cars. It's a good car. I bought my Infinity because they're Nissan. The Nissan, it's a, Nissan's a good. But I, uh, my truck is the fastest, the, the the worst depreciating SUV in the country. That one? Yeah. Because it's Infinity. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I, just, I had the Armada. That was the same thing. Yeah. The Platinum. Yeah. And I think I made like 15 Gs when I sold that. Really? Yeah, I swear to God. I, if I told, if I, the, I tell the, you the, what the, I you paid have for the TVs in the seats, I have, and all this I stuff? have like. Mine is one level lower than the highest you can get. I got TVs. I got the diamond uh, stitching inside. I got like it's got all the bells and whistles because we thought that's gonna be our forever truck. And then we had another kid. I think it's the Affinity brand, bro. I don't know what happened. Cause the, Nissan's really good. I bought the truck was ninety eight thousand dollars. I bought it in twenty twenty. What's it worth right now? Fifty eight. <laughs> twenty three thousand. Oh Jesus. Yep. So it is. Yeah, the, the Nissan Armada is better to buy, because I was gonna trade. So I bought a, an Escalade ESV for my wife, for to 
for the family really because yeah. now we need a bus to doctor's appointments Everything. bus yeah. everywhere yeah. we go it's, it's a bus. everybody's together so the goal was to trade in the 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 infinity and give me a truck and i went to trade it in the guy's like oh yeah I, you know this is where the, the, the guy's like yeah you got to come up with thirty six thousand dollars blah blah i go i go i got an 800 credit score bro you're out of your fucking mind and he's like oh no your credit's great he's like we don't need pay stubs or anything but your your truck's only worth this much <laughs> I'm gonna lost my shit, dude. I was like, what? And you're thinking it's a luxury vehicle, it's an infinity, it's nice. It still looks great. It's only oh, that's has, a nice car. When I traded oh, when yeah. I went to trade it, it had twenty five thousand miles on it. It was already thirty grand upside down. And normally I take so a ten thousand dollar hit. Yeah, I'm stuck with it. Yeah. Now my goal is to pay it off and just hopefully in the next year or so I'll pay it off and then now it'll just be another car that I have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not yeah. necessarily what I wanted to do, but that's what it is. But I'm stuck with it. Yeah. But Gap coverage is a huge thing oh, yeah. that you should get. Totally. You get a new car, get gap coverage. Because as soon as you drive off the lot, that car is not worth the same. Mm. You wreck it, and, and they're going to value it or whatever the value of the car is. And you're going to have to cover the difference yeah. if you don't have gap coverage. If you have gap coverage, like for me, if I wreck that truck today, the $30,000 that it's upside down, the gap coverage will cover. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, yeah, you're, you're on homo's hook. in for the hook for yeah. it. Yeah. So gap coverage is huge. Make sure that you 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 get with your agent, and it's not about how much you're saving; it's about how much you're getting covered. Mm -hmm. If you got a family or a business, if you got a business, you can protect yourself. If you got a family, if you got a family alone, yeah, because like the minimums, I forgot the numbers because I haven't you did it in so long. It was fifteen thousand. I think it just went up. A it's like bit. nothing. I mean, that's I, why that's what we got to the it's six thousand dollar headlights because fifteen thousand dollars. Imagine if you're hurt somebody. No, you need like at least like one hundred three hundred thousand dollar coverage. A good agent will tell you the truth, right? A good agent will walk you through it and go, this is what you need. This is what we recommend. They're not trying to sell you on it. Don't get the ones that are always trying to upsell you. And when they're done telling you what the cover is, they want to sell you life insurance. Just go, hey, this is who I am. This is what I need. Where, where am I safe? Where, you know, if we get in an accident, they're not going to come after my business, my mm -hmm. wife, every, all my asses and everything that I have. Where I'm going to, but the car is going to get repaired. I'm going to get a comparable car for what I need. Like for my wife, I up my coverage. I think I'm up to like $4,800 for my rental car coverage because I need to get an SUV. Yeah. And an SUV is what, $70, $80 a day? I don't know. Maybe more. Yeah. And, you know, your standard car is like your standard coverage is $1,500 a month for a rental car for 30 days. Yeah. So you'll whip through that real quick. In 10 days, I'm out of out of a car yeah. that's how long it takes to get a car just started working on it yeah no. so just make sure that if you're out there and, and and if you think you're saving a ton of money on your coverages just think twice and it's not you're not really saving it you're putting yourself at at, at risk for any type of liability and yeah. you might not even you might get rear-ended and you hit the guy in front of you they're gonna go after you for that yeah after your insurance for that you know what I'm saying? And Told if you me. only got liability, like you're majorly screwed. Yeah, li you shouldn't have liability. Zion, do you have liability? Okay, good. Yeah, answer. you should. I'm gonna teach you on this stuff because we gotta protect you, bro. You're an asset. I, it's 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 huge. It's it's having the right coverage is it's it's a it's a big deal. And 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 just look, the, unfortunately, and and I say this because it should be different. I think the insurance company should really educate you on on how things work and help you. They make the most money off the smallest policy. But they, they should help you. They should help you. They should guide you when you get in an accident and go, hey, we're going to walk you through it. This, these are preferred vendors. This is what it means. These yeah. are independent vendors. This is what it means. What do you need help with? You call in and like you feel guilty calling. Like they make you feel guilty. They don't yeah, treat you. They're not going to educate you. They don't then, treat then you Then you're going to save well. money. It's so crazy to me that they don't treat you well. And then they they go around the bush and then ultimately they scare the crap out of you. If you go, hey, I'm going to use Scott's collisions. Well, did you know they're not a preferred vendor with State Farm or with Geico or whatever? And they're like, oh, what does that mean? Well, that means that they may or may not cover uh, warranty. We're not going to warranty the work. I'm like, you don't warranty the work either way because you're not the one doing it. Yeah. Even yeah, if you yeah. go to a preferred shop, they have to warranty the work. Yeah, it's the one who's installing it, buying the part. Uh, yeah, because if you call your insurance company, they're warranting their labor and the, whatever manufacturer warranty there is. But they scare you, right? They yeah. scare the consumer. And again, we're talking about like nobody educates us on what happens when you get in an accident. So you get in the phone with the insurance and they're like, you shouldn't take your car there. They're not going to cover it. And then you're like, you may have to come out of pocket. And you're like, okay, where should I take it? Mm -hmm. And they Knowing you list. probably have to come out of pocket anyways because you got a deductible. If it's your fault. <clears throat> so, okay, guys, go follow this guy. Go 
Scottsdale Collision. I don't care if you're in Ahwatukee. I don't care if you're in California. Send your car to this guy. We'll pick it up. Yeah. They're, like, yeah, they'll go pick it up for you. Yeah. He's got the team. He's They know good lawyers. Like, take care of them. You're a good dude, dude. And I'm, we're just, uh, one last thing before we go. We just launched our fleet division uh, for guys like you and guys that have a fleet. So one of our shops only focuses on fleets. Nice. So instead of putting your van in front of or behind all the other cars that we have, it'll go directly to the fleet department. And then yeah, definitely assembly line. They'll right just there. run it through and get it out as fast as and we can. And you start to learn who they are, what kind of vehicle, all that stuff. Well, then I take that. I, I take all that hardship away from your fleet manager right yeah, yeah the yeah. guy's just like where is it going to get wrapped who's going to fix it when are they going to fix it so we we just launched that and and i think it's going to be very good for business owners. i love it i love it i love it so thank you all for watching don't forget to like and subscribe to everything we're doing and be blessed see you guys